Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. Today, we have finally moved on. You know, we had our, our first couple of years here in our 2021 save. You know, we started off with the hometown Bellarmine crew. Ran them for a couple of years, got to Missouri. I think we ran, what, what, like eight seasons with Missouri, something like that. And we just took them to the final four last year. Uh, but we could not get the budget increase for anything. Uh, we were just kind of stuck there in that Great Plains region, which, to be quite honest, I, I feel like is... I don't feel like it has as much talent as some of the other regions. You know, some years it does, but you guys witness some years it's just really, really poor. So uh, we have moved on here to the North Carolina Tar Heels, and we are going to have to completely rebuild this team that was destroyed by probation. Guys, look look how many scholarship players they have. Terrence Miner here, this junior point guard. And Chris Randolph over here, uh, a redshirt junior, small forward, one and a half star, terrible player. Terrence Miner's okay, sort of. I mean, <laughs> sort of okay. Uh, every other player is a walk-on. Look at all these internationals they've got that walked on. So this team just obliterated by probation. Uh, we've got 11 available scholarships. So, actually, the first thing I want to do is take a look here at what are my goals. Because this team, win 15 games is going to be a huge stretch. We've only got two scholarship players, and one of them's completely worthless and forgettable. Winning 15 games, I don't know. That's going to be a real, real stretch. So, the first thing we got to do, finish top three in the conference is out of the question. Improve school prestige is probably a very long shot let's see although their school prestige has it's dropped down to 75 uh so yeah that's extremely unlikely to happen this season so what we really need to do uh, first i'm going to see if i can call the athletic director and beg for some easy gimmies try to get us some uh yeah lots of cupcakes at home thank you all right, so that would be ideal. If we could at least hit one of those three goals, that would be great. If we miss all three of them, I think we'll survive. And given the scholarships and everything else that we got going on, we should be fine. But uh, I'd love to, to hit one of those goals. Uh, normally, when we get going on stream, I'll, I'll totally do a review of the roster and review of like last year's recruits and whatnot. But I mean, we don't really have much of that to go through at this point. We can check out the draft from last year, see if any of our uh, any of our Missouri guys did anything on that front. A couple of Louisville's there. Chris's Aztecs. Oh, there we go. Look, my man Awash in the second round. Antonio Washington, one of the first Missouri Tigers uh, to go pro in this save. I th I think we had a couple. Let's check. Uh, Beach Bear, how long did you stick around? We're with North Carolina now. Did, did you stick with us that long? Or are you surprised to see the the Tar Heel blue here? Oh, we got five drafted players. Look at that. So, yeah, we had you know, Mike O's. Uh, we had the other center. So, yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Five drafted players. Okay. We had our one Final Four last year. Eight 21 seasons. Six all-conference players. Uh, no coach of the years yet. Okay. Well, those are going to be coming very, very, very soon. Why DDS hate my boys? Oh, why is North Carolina your boys? Is that is that what's going on? They're on probation, so I, I don't think you know, it's something that they had an unscrupulous coach. But we are here to to fix those ills. Almost up to 90 recruiting, so we're close to maxing out all of our coach skills. Uh, this season will be awful. As soon as we get past this, we should start to get very good very quickly. And then, uh, not long after that, it's going to turn into total domination. <clears throat> I'm 
I'm going to leave these philosophies as they are for now. Uh, as we improve our team, we're going to start to alter that a bit. So really this year, I mean, I, I would like to win games, but it, it, what we teach them, anything like we're completely rebuilding this team. There's not a single player here that matters to me at all for next year. So, I mean, I, I'd love to win games. What are they good at? Shuffle? And that's the one they're running the least. I guess they're flex. They're all right at flex and shuffle. All right. Uh, five out. Oh, they're actually really good at five out. That's their best offense. So, I mean, let's just set it up to try to win some games for this year. And then we're going to have to rework every bit of this next time. All right, so that's our offense defensively. Ooh, do we have a zone that we know? Not not especially. So let's... Oh, what do we want to do? Let's back off of this some and throw in more of this 3-2 zone just to mix it up some. Like that 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press, that'll work. They've learned and worked on that. Let's get over here to the practice plan. How did we do last year at the zoo? We, we made the final four, baby. We're, we took the zoo to the final four. It was heartbreaking, the final four, when we finally went down. But, uh, you know, we made it happen. All right, I will go ahead and start easing off of this, hitting that a little bit harder. 10% is fine there. We need a little bit more. Let's see. We can drop that off to 10. 10, 10. Ooh. All right, I want 10s across the board here. This will be fine for this year, and then next year... Uh, we'll continue to evolve this a little bit more. Uh, let's get to the main event, though, because, oh, and I just <laughs> I just advanced right past the 26. So in a year where we got 11 scholarships and everything counts, I just totally skipped the first week. So uh, whatever, we'll survive. We do have 11 scholarships, though, so we can completely rebuild this team. My, th my thinking is... We're not going to use all 11 of those. We are we should be able to land four or five really solid players. And then after that, you know, we might have to lay off and see if we can't just make some things happen with those guys next year uh, and you know, have another season after that. So we'll see how that works out. All right. So, I mean, we can get an idea of what happened in here. Ah. Uh, that's the real problem, not setting up that list, is I'm not going to have national camp information. So that hurts, but we're very much hopefully going to have the regional stuff to go on. So let's get everybody set up here. All right. What do we have? Are we not pulling any interest from anywhere outside the region? I'm pretty sure we got a national report. Oh, no, there's a Great Plains player that's interested. Okay. All right. Let's just get this set up. Uh, same as usual. We're taking interested players. we we'll try to get a nice little spread going. Only five that were four-star or higher that were actually interested in us. I don't know if that's a function of probation or... Or what the deal is. I don't want the international. We actually didn't have anything available for transfers, I don't think. Because we skipped right past transfers. So. Whew. The interest is low. That's got to be a function of probation. I mean, I guess we throw some transfers in. I suppose. Definitely some JUCOs. I will definitely take JUCOs right now. That is a certainty. We got a really, really nice budget, so we're good to go there. But... All right, Chris. Chris headed to dinner. All good, man. We're just getting this thing set up. It's going to be a pretty wild year. You know, if I could grab like a handful of top guys and a handful of JUCOs, that would kind of be the best of both worlds. Just put a, just like throw a team together <laughs> real quick. I hate 
having this many internationals. Oh my gosh, it's so many internationals. Why don't we have more interested domestic players? Oh, Lucas Saraville. Two centers that are four star above. Yikes. So yeah, I gotta think this is. What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy. I gotta think that all this uh, low interest has something to do with probation. Maybe. Uh, I'm not completely certain, but we're certainly gonna get it cracking either way here. Cause it's not gonna take us long whatsoever to get this bad boy turned around. Now, of course, I'm a dummy and didn't set up my lists ahead of time, so I missed out on uh, the indie camp information. So that was super dumb, but we'll see what we can do. You know, we do the already tired of talking to me. I'm at 91 recruiting. Can't even unlock one category over there. The Missouri Turncoat. Man Cave Hawkeyes getting pitchforks and stringing me up. You know what? It's not a turncoat. Missouri's board turned on me. I took them to the Final Four. They still wouldn't give me any money. They were never giving me any money. I, went, I was there for 10 years. Couldn't get a budget increase once. Turned the whole program around. If they don't want a basketball program, I don't know what I can do for them. Uh, I gave them a basketball program, and they wouldn't give me much of anything. So We're here at UNC where we don't have to beg for money anymore. We do need to beg for some players this year, though. So let's see how this goes. Imagine recruit. I don't have to imagine Breeze is going to happen. We're definitely recruiting a handful of MJs here. All right. Let's got some feedback right out of the gate. No awesome visits yet. Let's get a couple more of these camps in. At least we'll get all of our regional camp information because we did have some people here at Houston. A lot of power forwards. Wow. Bennett and Cunningham and Ryan. Were any of those ours? Bennett, Cunningham, and Ryan. So out of the five guys we had targeted in the Great Plains region, three of them, all power forwards, were all in the top five of their camp. So that's interesting. Oh, Beach Bear, I, I never would do that. I would never purposefully lose to Louisville. It'll, it'll hurt me very ever so slightly to have to beat on them every year, but uh, I would never purposefully lose to anybody. Mm. Oh, so we didn't have anybody at the Chicago camp. Okay. Nobody at Chicago. So, let's just... And, uh... I don't know. Let's keep scouting some regional guys. Eventually, some of these regional guys, some of them's going to have awesome visits. They're going to want to come here, ideally. Getting hung up on a lot for as high as our recruit rating is. Let's see what we can get out of old Troy too. Maybe texting. Maybe the kids these days. You gotta text them, right? Oh, come on. Alright, I'm out of time. So I won't be bothered with the last one. I was just out of time. Alright, let's see if we get any of these guys getting some good interest in. Right out of the gate. Nope. Nothing yet. Dead period. Uh, we can just work through a couple of these folks, unlock the rest of the categories on them, but we do not get any visits. Right now we're not on the list, alright. He is unlocked except for academics, come on, thank you, don't care about academics, you're perfect for UNC, because we will graduate anybody. No offense there, Beach Bear. <laughs> All right, through the dead period, let's get our last two camps worth of information and see where uh, the folks on our list fall when it comes to the New York camp. Kenny the Jet Smith also coming soon on Cards Universe. Yeah, maybe. I want to bring in good old-fashioned James Worthy, maybe. Uh, maybe a Vince Carter or two. Something like that. 
Post a couple guys. Keep scouting live on the America East prospects. All right. Push through this one. See if we get any kind of interest. And then we can go through these lists. See how they did, at least at the regional camp. You know, we, we don't have that Indy Elite information because I was dumb and skipped it by accident without setting up my list. But, you know, if you're MVP at the Big Apple, you're good to go. Uh, so, no interest here, though. That's a shame. Uh, of course, we'll know anybody that, like, didn't stand out at the regional camp is not worth having around. Top 10 at Memphis. All right. Not bad. Not bad. No information. Didn't stand out. Get off here. Oh, for, ah. I don't know if we can go for three-star guys from China. It's just not doing it for me. He's also international. Oh. All right. I just, I, I mean, I don't mind going after internationals, especially if they're very highly rated, but like three-star guys, I, I don't want to be going for, you know, it seems kind of risky to me. Top five, solid. He's decent. You know, now here's the thing, guys like that, we're going to keep them around this year just because uh, we need a lot of players. We need a lot of depth. I was hoping that I could bring in like two one-and-done type guys and then two uh, other like high four-star guys that would be more like four-year four players and then sort of fill in around them with just a little bit of depth and save about half of these scholarships. But at this point, like we're not generating much interest. So that is certainly concerning. So many internationals. Oh, this was a JUCO. Yeah, let's host the JUCO. He was decent. Another international. Didn't stand out. Get off my list. Now I haven't. All right. Chris Holmes in the top 25. Let's go on and bring him in. Hardworking kid, top five. Ramal Kellum. Have we already hosted him? Because he looks like a great recruit. He's actually the top shooting guard on our list. You know, I don't know if it's going to happen this season. If I did it this season, Missouri would just dominate. But, I mean, maybe, you know, you want to get, get that out of your system, right? Maybe you just want to see them smash me in retribution for me bailing on them. Uh, so, I don't know. We'll see if we can make that happen. But the thing is, like, we're trying to win 15 games over here, and that would not at all uh, help us in that uh, objective. Decent. It didn't stand out. Get off the list, David Morris. Anthony Miller, you can join Mr. Morris. All right. Another Juco. We will bring you in. I always hate bringing in Juco's, but I mean, there's really not a quicker way to bring in experienced players, right? Top 10, Shea Thornton. Hiding way down here at the bottom of the list, outside the top 100, but uh, looking like a player. MVP of Houston, love it. International, international. Top 5 at Houston, international. Man, we're getting rid of these internationals next year. You, you just can't get any information on them. All right, so here's a high school senior with no camp information. How do we not have a regional camp on him? He wasn't in the top 150 or whatever in the West. Oh, I didn't get the West camp information either. I, I simmed through the Nationals and the West Coast all at the same time. So we're, we're going to be flying blind on Dan Samuels. Top five at Houston, looking good. Uh, high school senior in the West Coast, so no information there. Brown Bennett, we've already looked at. And center, like there's not a lot of depth here. We're going to assume Lucas is solid. He's very highly rated. Chris Armstrong, not wonderful. Perrine didn't stand out. Get off the list. 
didn't stand out. Of course, you know, we're quickly into three-star guys, so it's really not surprising. International, great leader, top 25. Derek Page is one to look at. Top 10, Ivan Ross, also one to look at. Uh, and back to Saraville. All right, so you know, we dropped the players that were just clearly not uh, not performing well, and we only we didn't trim a whole lot. We didn't trim a whole lot at all. So we've got a lot of decent prospects, even though star-wise they're not crazy. Uh, we're not generating a ton of interest. Beardtown asked if I typically steer clear of players outside the top 100. Absolutely not. Uh, you know, you, you get players outside the top 100 all the time that were top five at a regional camp or top five at the Georgia camp, top five at East Coast Jam. Uh, I, I look at camp results so, so vastly much more important than what they're actually, you know, this rating. This rating, uh, I've said it 100 times, I'm pretty sure this rating has to do more with their potential. Uh, it's going to have more of an effect on whether or not they go pro early. Like these three guys, whether regardless of how they perform this year, regardless of what they did in camps, these three guys are probably one and done prospects uh, because it's looking at potential. So while the, those, you know, two, 300 rated guys, they may have a lower ceiling, but a lot of times the camp performances is more indicative of how talent, like how developed they currently are you know, and how quick they can make an impact. So, no, I could care less about rating. I, I look almost exclusively at camp performance first, and then I use other factors as um, tiebreakers. What I am going to do is go to – can I go to national region and keep most of my list? All I want to do is get rid of the nat the internationals because I don't want to just burn through this budget for nothing. The JUCO's hot on us, so that's good. All right, let's, uh, let's just burn through here, see who we can get interested. Let's, uh, I guess we can call the JUCO. Starting to look at camp results early. Yeah, the sooner you figure out that camp results are the true indicator of ability, the sooner you, uh, you're just better off going off of that information. And, I mean, it makes sense. Like, if you went and watched a bunch of people play basketball and you you watched it and said, that's the best player on the court. Like, would you recruit one of the other dudes over him just because he was rated higher in a magazine? No, of course not. That'd be insane. You take the best player. I actually don't even think I should be calling the JUCOs uh, because they're probably not going to be our first visits. They're going to be secondary targets. We'll probably offer them. All right. Is Will Harris one of the top MVP, top five guys? Who are they? One of them was a power forward. Is it Brian Bennett? MVP at Houston. Let's unlock him. All right. I think there was also one at shooting guard. Ramal Kellum. He's already unlocked. Ooh, looking strong for Syracuse, though. Was Chris Holmes? He was top 25. Yeah, let's... We need some top 25s. Like, we just need bodies right now. We got no bodies. We got two scholarship players, and one of them is dreadful, and I might as well kick him. Uh, might as well just cut him straight off the team. One and a half star, red shirt junior. So been in the program for four years and still can't get that second star all the way filled up. Uh, he's oh, that's the the Ju the JUCOs. Bootsy and Leo had wonderful times. Let's see here. All right, so the Norton came out. Let's see if Missouri is being represented on here at all. There we go. Tim Wayne. In the top 40. Oh, Bruce Wayne. That's the only one. It's a good one, though. And he ought to be starting for them this year. So, uh, old Batman made the Norton list. Good to see you, buddy. Hope he has a good year. Hope Missouri has a good year as a whole. Keep on pushing through this. Starting to see some of these guys who might not have had crazy good visits. They're starting to warm to us. Let's see. Where was... Wasn't it like the worst small forward that was so good? Wasn't it Shea Thornton? Top 10 player? Yeah, he must have moved up in the rankings. So let's host him. Have a good chat.
You know, the thing is, I guess we're still only 75 in prestige, so I, I kind of understand why there's still somewhat limited interest. But, uh, that, that's not going to last long. We're going to take this team straight to the top. Ah! Troy Cook, one well, of those guys we're not going to have any camp info on. It's a shame, because he's actually got some interest. I mean, we'll probably just have to bring in some of those guys. I have no idea how they actually did, but... Whatever. Got to make it happen at some point, right? Alright. Let's pop back over to the all recruits list. Make sure that we get in all of these five stars and as many of the four stars as possible. And then, I mean, we're just going to have to cut our list down and get a little bit more focused a little bit later this year than we normally would. Uh, both because we've got so many scholarships, so many, like we need so many bodies, and we're missing so much of the camp info. So that's my own stupid fault. I was so excited to jump into this. I just went straight out and hit the wrong button right out of the gate to get the stream started off on the absolute uh, best way possible. Best way I could think of. Make it a little bit of a mystery here in the first year. Because when you desperately need to rebuild everything immediately, what you really want to do is go into it with a little the least amount of information you possibly can. So, let's see what we got here. 11 scholarships. I mean, I might offer I might offer 10 of them. Uh, there's no way we're filling them all. And I don't even expect to at all. But let's just go position by position here. Maybe offer two at each position, see what happens. Anybody with interest is probably getting an offer. Maybe top 10 at Memphis. Yep, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, that's a weird list. Hopefully we blow these guys away when it comes to the in-home. Alright. Let's see if we can get the rest of your stuff unlocked. Alright, so Anthony Gunn is one offer. Now let's see here. I think, yeah, MVP. Basically no interest in a ton of schools that are hot on him, which is a shame. So we got really no interest out of anybody else out here. So we kind of need some guys that, like, like this, that aren't don't have you know ten schools that are hot on them. Of course, we have no camp information whatsoever on Mason. Top twenty-five at Big Apple, so maybe Newman. Yeah, uh, let's make Newman. Let's host him, offer him. Okay, there's a couple of offers at at the point. Breeze is playing a browser football game called Progression Football. Went undefeated for the first time. <laughs> Became the next Bill Belichick, but you have no rings. That hurts. Right, Random Test says the problem becomes you can only do four in-homes and the top-rated guys feel rejected. That's absolutely right. That's why I was saying, like, really, this year, probably we get four, maybe five high school guys, and then hopefully a couple of these JUCOs. Uh, just because they're going to come in straight, off, straight out of the gate and... You know, be a little bit more experienced and a little bit more developed. Top five at Big Apple. We're in his top three. This is a no-brainer. All right, so Jim Williams is one offer. And we can at least check out. So Ramel Kellum, he's got a bunch of schools hot on him. He'd be a good one, but... Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, okay. Justin Cobb was decent at Big Apple. Eh. Top five at Big Apple. We're right there in the mix. Prestige, not a big concern. All right. So that was Joiner, right? Top five, Big Apple. Yep, there's a couple offers there. Man, we got two good offers. Do we even throw the offer to this Juco? Let's see if we grab those other two guys first. The Juco will be there. Probably. <laughs> Probably. See, Benson, he's decent. Okay, we're number one on his list. That's nice. Nothing doing here. Troy Cook, I think we're at least warm. But, of course, we have no camp information. Benson was decent. Shea Thornton was good, right? Top ten at Big Apple. Yeah, so there is a definite offer there. And here, let's, grab, let's go ahead and offer this Juco. Power forward. Mark Woodley is hot. Are we hot on him? Yeah, top 25. We're hot on him. Cool. 
Who else we got? Will Harris. Decent at Big Apple. Eh. Eh. Let's see. Any of these other guys being lightly recruited that we can maybe sneak in on? North Carolina. All right, we're... All right, yeah, right here. Top five. So, I mean, we're kind of in the ballpark. Pro I mean, we probably don't have a realistic chance there. Probably don't have a realistic chance, but... um. Did I just skip over small forwards? One, two. Three, four. Five, six offers. Did I not? Seven offers. Eight offers. If I've already made eight offers, why does it still say I have five scholarships? I thought it said 11 earlier. Is it just giving us, like, 13? <laughs> Saraville. I mean, we're warm on Saraville. We have to go for him, right? That seems like he'd be a difference maker. Six Super Bowls and you choked every time. Guys, anybody that watched my... Don't feel bad. If you watched my uh, DDS Pro Football streams, I, got the, I played, like, three seasons with the Bengals, got them to the Super Bowl, I think, every year, and failed every year. So it was spectacularly awful. Oh, no. Now, this says two left. So, this count is wrong for some reason. Did we not just offer... Oh, no. We didn't. We offered Ross. He was the, he was the top ten. Alright, so that's that should be ten offers out. Right? Only one left? Yes, yeah, so we've offered ten players now. Uh, let's move it on up to the next week. You know what? We will th go ahead and throw out our 11th offer. There we go. All the scholarships out. Let's see what happens. I don't think we'll bring in 11. If we do, you know, what the heck? We'll have a basketball team next year. We can we can work that out. We can figure it out. I'd rather have the bodies in and have to figure it out than have another t season like the one we're about to have. Because the season we're about to have is going to be ugly. If you offer from the detail screen, it doesn't update. Yeah. Woodley had an awesome time. Jim Williams, awesome time. Charles Benson. All right, so we got to be very picky with what uh, visits we actually make. Whew. Greg Pepper's bailing. All right, so as you guys know, I love to have a point guard. He was top 10 at Memphis. And our other point guard offer... top 25 at Big Apple. So I think Anthony Gunn is probably the better option and we pitch him playing time. Right now we've got a, I think we offered a couple of MVP. Oh wait, Jim Williams top 5 at Big Apple. As was Brian Joyner. Let's go visit Williams. Hold on. Joiner wants playing time. We, I think we got a better shot there, right? I think we got a better, a better pitch for playing time than we do for academics. Okay. Let's make sure that we get the big man. Oh, but we're not in his top ten. I mean, I feel like we've got that offer out there. Ivan Ross, on the other hand, we're number one. He was top ten at the regional camp. He's into facilities. So let's make sure we get ourselves a big man. And let's see. Woodley, top 25. I think it was Brian Bennett was MVP at Houston. Yeah. Let's go back and check out. Wait, 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 wait. I just can't remember if we have another MVP kind of guy that's really high on us. Thornton was top 10 at Big Apple. Oliver wasn't great. Oh, wait. Where's our, our two offers? Cunningham we don't really have a shot at, so it's really Woodley. Top 25. I say Thornton is probably the way we go. 
give them the old location pitch. We can still host, and we do still have a ton of money, so let's make sure to keep on doing that, because we can always add in some depth after the fact, right? And remember, I, I filtered all those internationals out. So those guys are still out there if we want to grab a couple more, a couple extra players as we go here. So let's see what this first week looks like. I feel pretty good. We should lay in two or three of these guys. I don't know how we'll do with, you know, all the guys we didn't visit, but the ones we visited, we should grab two or three of them. Mm. I don't know. Did we visit Woodley? I don't think that we did, but he was super into us. I would say we didn't get Saraville. I think we got Thornton and Ross. Woodley, I think it's more likely we got Woodley than Joyner. But let's see. I don't know. We, we made a visit to Joyner. Thornton loved it. Maybe we did get Joyner. All right. Woodley's going to Virginia Tech. All right, because we didn't visit him. Ross is coming. Joyner's coming. Thornton's coming. Saraville's going to Syracuse. Ah, Saraville to Syracuse. Uh, it's almost like they planned that one. But the good news is we only lost two guys that we offered. So, let's see. One was a center. Do we have another center offer that we want to make? Yeah, right here, I think. <laughs> Declined to visit. Yikes. Well, hold on. A two-star guy. Top 25 at a regional camp. Maybe not. Maybe maybe we are satisfied with Ivan Ross for next year. And that's one of the scholarships that we let roll over. All right. At power forward. Let's see. Still got this offer outstanding, which I don't think is really going anywhere. Let's get that updated. Super into location. He's in Texas. All these look, he's super into Missouri. It's almost like somebody rebuilt that school into something. So I mean I think he's probably the best power forward on the board. I just don't know that we have a shot at him. Let's take a look, because we got a couple other guys that went warm here on us. Uh Darren Ryan, top five at Houston. Yeah, let's do this one. We're going to offer, going to visit and talk about playing time. All right, so we got a center. That would be a power forward. We've got a small forward, but let's see what else is going on out here. Oh, right, the Juco. We don't need to visit them right away. Jim Williams would definitely be a good one to have. So he's into academics. We can go ahead and try to make that pitch. You know, sometimes you don't have to be great at it. Sometimes, you know, maybe we're going out there and explaining to them, like, eh, yeah, we might not be, uh, you know, Princeton, but, uh, you know, we got good academics. So, you know, we're, you're just trying to, you're trying to get by, right? Go out here and talk to him about playing time. Let's see here. Newman. Go talk to him about conference prestige. All right, let's see how those go. Check out this schedule. See what we we asked for cupcakes at home. What did we end up with? Well, I don't know if I'd call. I don't know if I'd call Purdue at home, Creighton at home, exactly cupcakes. We got to go on the road to play the Aztecs, and then it's ACCville. So 15 wins against this schedule would be shocking to me. I don't think we have any realistic chance of making that happen. I was just flipping through, seeing if a uh, game against Missouri was something we could reschedule. Doesn't look like it is. So, this is the schedule we got. We're going to stick with this. <clears throat> See how this second week of recruiting went. I mean, if we add six guys plus a couple of JUCOs, I mean, this... We got Anthony Gunn, so that's huge. Jamie Newman went to high. Let's see who else we got first. So, we got the JUCO... Ah, lost out on Darren Ryan. That would have been a nice big man. We got the point guard. That's awesome. A 
Look at Missouri jumping out and grabbing Brian Bennett. MVP at Houston. That's a heck of a get for Missouri. So whoever they brought in must be following in, uh, following in their predecessor's brilliant footsteps. Uh, we got to start making a run at Cunningham, I suppose. Will Harris just doesn't excite me much. Dan Samuels, we have no information. Same with Dickens. So Eric Tice, actually, <laughs> 15 and 15. Top five at Big Apple. So I'm going to go talk to this kid about location. Offer him that scholarship. I mean, we look like we should be way toward the back, but he's still around after two weeks, so what do we have to lose? Center, we're still all right with that guy. We got Shea Thornton and a Juco here at small forward, so we're set at that position. Shooting guard. Try to bring in Jim. Come on, Jim. The academics aren't what they say. <laughs> we got good academics at this school. But if we can add him and Joyner, that would be extremely solid. And then we want to we want to throw uh, Newman on board here as well with that conference prestige. So, yeah, if we can just land, like, one more big man, whether it's Cunningham or Tice, I'll feel real good about next year. But since we are so very limited, let's go ahead and just offer Paige. Right, he was some, he's top 25. Yeah, I mean, good enough. Let's go ahead and offer him. I, I need, a, you need to have three talented big men on a basketball team. You got to have two starters and somebody to rotate through there with them, so... You know, we'll get it however we can. And there's a couple of these guys I full... I don't expect to get either of those power forwards. I mean, we could probably grab Paige, the, this center here. But I, that's why I offered him, is I don't expect to get either of those power forwards. We'd have to do a little come from behind, get lucky kind of thing to get one of them. All right, so we got two open scholarships, and that boat's poorly for... There's one of the power forwards we lost. Ah, and Jim Williams goes to Villanova, so no guard depth for us. We're not allowed to get Jim Williams. That's frustrating. All right, so we went straight to warm on Eric Tice. We jumped up into here. Let's see. Let's make another run at it. See what happens. Check out Dickens. Ah, we're not going to have any information. So I'm not throwing any Hail Marys on guys we have absolutely no info on. Here's shooting guard. Let's go ahead and make the visit on the Juco. Bring him in so we can pair him up with... Uh, we can pair up the Juco alongside Bryce Joyner. We should be all right. Uh, no, I wanted to text him. Get it unlocked. See what it's looking like. Give him a nice coach discipline or location. Well... We got location for you, buddy. I would really like to bring in Jermaine Newman. I don't know what he's waiting on. His parents don't have much control. I mean, let's go talk about academics. He's into that. And give that a go. I mean, Duke's right there behind us, and obviously they would be much better academically speaking. So, all right, last week at in-homes, let's see how that goes. And then we just let these offers ride. We're not going anywhere else. There we go. So we brought in Newman. So we got Gun and New. Let's see what else we got here. We came from behind and stole Eric Tice. That's a nice one. We still don't have Bootsy Gunder? That's a great name, by the way. Uh, actually, let's just go ahead and take a look at this entire class, because... Gunder, I think, is the only offer outstanding. No, Derek Page is still outstanding. He still doesn't want to even visit. But we'll leave the offer out there. Maybe we pick him up later on in the year. So we got an offer out there. At power forward, we're done. Small forward, we're completely done. 
shooting guard we still got the offer out on Bootsy and point guard we're done two outstanding offers but let's take a look at the class that we landed in uh, that portion of recruiting so Eric Tice big man we came in and stole at the last minute top five at Big Apple uh, again we don't have the national camp information but look at my man averaging almost 16 and 16 in high school you know no blocks or steals so that makes me sincerely question his defensive ability uh, he's got a b minus over here he's got an f at shot blocking and steals though so you know that tracks uh, but we stole a, a top camper there shea thornton uh, top 10 at the big apple so we're bringing in quite a few of these top five top 10 guys from the big apple jermaine newman at point guard he was in the top 25. That's not wonderful, but we're trying to add depth here. We're, we're adding all these guys to a team full of absolute pure walk-ons. Uh, Anthony Gunn, top 10 player at Memphis. So, again, top 10, top 25 guys. We're adding players, we're adding depth, and then we can end up building around them. Brian Joyner, top 5 at the Big Apple. Ivan Ross, top 10. And last but not least, Leo Heskett. He is a junior college player, so we won't have information on him. So, I mean, we've got Ross and Tice on the inside. We would like to get Paige to to be that rotational man on the on the inside. Then we've got Thornton at the small forward, the JUCO to add some depth. Joiner, a solid shooting guard. Hopefully, we get Bootsy to add the depth, and then Newman at gun at point guard. So this will be a team next year. They will be competitive and then after that you know it's going to be cracking so quick turnaround here with north carolina still two more commits to go and really two commits that would help build out this team uh, so there you have it that's about the best we could do year one i mean only having 75 school prestige oh and look at there we added bootsy I don't see Paige, but we added Bootsy, so we got the depth at shooting guard. So we're looking good here. <laughs> DLT says I'm a sellout. I already blamed it on Missouri. Look, man, if Missouri had ponied up some cash, you know, I'm taking them to how many Sweet 16s? I take them from, you know, whatever, 50 prestige to 70 prestige. They can't give me another dollar. They can't upgrade my facilities once. You know, I mean, that's on them. Uh, uh, these weekly incidents and stuff, I'm not even going to waste the time to go in and discipline these players. I don't care about any single player on this roster. The entire roster could disappear overnight, and I would care less. So we're just going to get through this season, and that's the extent of it. Yeah, 11 scholarships was ridiculous. We'll save up. I think we're going to save up a couple of them. And... Uh, Are we saving a couple of them? Well, do we still have scholarships to offer? I hope that we do. Yeah, still two scholarships to offer, so that's what we'll carry on over the next season. We'd be able to bring in two guys. Uh, I don't know. Like, realistically, we can't even redshirt any of those guys that we would be bringing in. The nice thing is at least two at least two of them are JUCOs, so that adds a little bit of variance to the recruiting class. Um but yeah, it'll still be weird and heavy in that season, and that's you know that's just probation. It is what it is. We'll work around it. We'll have the two scholarships at least next year. Uh, if e if any of these guys that we still have outstanding offers to don't commit, we're not offering anyone else. So uh, that you know that number could go up, but at least two scholarships for next year. Do we want to redshirt anybody? Let's uh, take a look at this roster. Look what we got here. Uh, this is. Uh, it looks, star-wise, it doesn't look like a train wreck, but they're all walk-ons. So, I mean, it's yikes. The scoring is, even if the stars are decent, look at this scoring. It's all dreadful. If you go and look at Missouri right now, they got at least five, six, seven players with, with six or seven scoring. It's much better. Look, nobody on this team can play defense outside of Terrence Minor. Only guy on the floor that can spell defense is Terrence Minor. This is the only thing resembling an ACC basketball player on this roster. Chris Randolph sucks, and all these walk-ons are trash. So we can let the we can let the AI suggest whatever they want to. AI suggest all, and they're gonna play. What is this? Why is Chris Randolph 
even an option at point guard. Because his passing and handling is so great. And so it's playing Terrence Minor at, at the two. No, that's not, not a thing. Not an option. Don't do that. All right. Terrence Miner's on the floor playing 28 minutes. Uh, that's really the only thing I care all that much about. At least he's getting some time. Uh, like I said, he's the only player that... Uh, that's the only chance that this team really has, regardless of what the stars say. He's the only one that can play any defense. He can kind of score better than anybody else, at least. So maybe these other guys can rebound or block shots or hit free throws or something. I don't know what they're so good at that they're being rated so highly. But this will be a long season. So we'll see. Stick around. See how many games I lose. It might be. A, see if we can get fired in one season after taking over a probation team. I hope not. Because if it can happen, this is the team for it to happen with. God, when we get to these games, it's going to be so bad. Like, even playing bad teams at home. In the out of conference, it's still going to be a crapshoot. Like, I, it wants us to win 15 games this year. I don't know that we win 10. I mean, maybe one of these walk ons just comes out of nowhere and shocks me. But Random Test says he does not believe he can get fired after one year. I don't think so either. Uh, especially given, you know, I know sometimes if you get a goal like, you know, reach the Final Four and you go to the NIT, it'll give you a message that says, like, you failed and wildly at that or something like that. So I think you get penalized more for those. But I don't have any goals like that. I think it's top three of the conference, uh, win 15 games, and improve school prestige. So, whoo, close game against a dreadful Oral Roberts team. So, but yeah, only the three goals... I think that I can really only drop to about 70%. But, I don't know. Kevin Garnett said anything is possible. <laughs> this team's so bad. This, yeah, this should be brutal to watch. This will be... Just, uh, every other stream so far, I've talked about the roller coaster, the ups and downs. Woo, look at that. Put it on Arkansas State. Uh, this one's just going to be straight down. Like This is the big hill at the end of the roller coaster, and you splash in water, and then you get drenched, and you forgot your cell phone in your pocket. Like That's what this season is going to be. Although, I mean, <laughs> don't call the presses yet, but we're undefeated. <laughs> Can we stop it right now, please? <clears throat> Uh, it's not going bad yet. We're about to go on a neutral court against uh, Arizona State, the team that's undefeated. Oh, we actually got him. We'll get Terrence Minor with 19. We actually got him. Okay. That's three wins. There, I can hear the emails in the background. Here come the, the LOIs. So let's see here. Well, we got eight, nine signees. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's eight. That looks like all of them so far. We don't have the center yet. He hasn't said one way or the other. But there's our power forward. There's our the center that we do have. There's one, two Jucos. The other shooting guard is Joyner. Gunn and Newman, the point guards. And then Shea Thornton, the other small forward. So that's our entire class. Whew, 3-0. and oh. We're on a hot streak so far. Yeah, after I'm after I'm doubting the walk-ons, they're gonna make a deep run, probably, just to prove me wrong. And then my team next year that I just brought in that I'm all excited about, they'll be hot trash. Oh, we're number eight in the country. What is this? We're gonna come straight. Oh, Doritos Logos Tacos. Missouri's absolutely gonna win it all. That's how it goes. As soon as I leave, the computer loves to take my teams and win it all. Now look, we can't lose. Four and zero, top ten in the country. They just needed a, a leader of men. And these walk-ons were ready to do big things.
Loving it so far. Loving it. Let's see if we can get into the top five. Let's go. Tar Heels, baby. Yeah, I know what happened at Tulane and... What was the other one? Georgia? Auburn. Auburn. So, yeah, it already, it happened twice. I thought that both of them were two years after I left. I'm almost certain Tulane was two years after I left. Auburn could have been the very next year. We'll win some championships here with North Carolina, though. Trust me there. Oh! Keeping the undefeated record going, guys. Let's see. We, we got to get to 15 before we get to conference play because I think things are going to take a sharp turn to the left at that point. <laughs> yeah, he said just quit recruiting and let him walk on. <laughs> Maybe you're onto something. I, we'll see how it goes. I, I suspect that this is going to be uh, an aberration. <laughs> aberration? Aberration? An anomaly. How about that? Uh, this is giving uh, a very rosy picture of what this year could be. I think. But I don't know. Are we at home here? So, so we got a legit top 10 team at home. What, what do we do here? Yeah, we lost. Only scored 55 points. Let Purdue come in. Smack us around at our own place. All right, just another scouting report. I was curious if that other center is going to commit. You know, he might actually last until uh, he might actually last until that late contact period. We'll have to see. All right, so five and one with walk on you. Wait, is this like the team that uh, Rick Pitino took over with UK? Like a whole bunch of nobodies coming off of probation turned into the unforgettables, right? Jamel Martinez and Travis Ford and all those guys. But Travis Ford could ball, so. Uh, maybe that's our, you know, maybe Terrence Minor is our Travis Ford. Let's see here. Now we got to go out and play the San Diego State Aztecs out on the West Coast. Let's see what we do away from home. Get smacked around. Lose by 12 against San Diego State. So, uh, started off hot. Got to 5-0. We might be stuck at 5 for a while. Let's see. You know, the good news is we still get to play the dregs of the ACC at home. So, you know, you're still going to have... There's going to be some bad teams, right? Somebody like a Boston College or... Georgia Tech, like they can have good years, but some of those teams are going to be bad, and we're going to get to play them at home. So hopefully we can pull those kind of games out. But I mean, it's going to be a struggle to hit 15 wins. Creighton at home is not going to help. I mean, I, you know, Air Force at home was almost a bad thing. So not that any of these games are easy. Like, we could easily lose to the Hawaii team. We could easily lose to Hofstra. All right, let's see. Let's take care of the the, uh, the Rainbow Warriors. Or are they just the Warriors now? Yeah. 24-point win. Look at the Jucos go. And not Jucos, walk-ons. My bad. Walk-ons. Six wins. I mean, I, I got to tell you, I'm ecstatic here. The stream fuel tonight is Founder Supporters. Uh, it's just a just another dark beer. They were out of that uh, peanut butter porter that I usually get. They were out of uh, some some streamer apparently already drank them all, and the liquor store ran out. So moved on to the Founder Supporters for tonight. I actually had some Founder's breakfast out earlier in the week. It was was also delicious. All right, let's see if we can pull one out against Creighton at home, but it's going to be a long shot. Oh, I turned it off. I thought I had already simulated the rest of the games. I hit it too fast. Did it ever pop up and tell us at the bottom? Uh, oh, we won. 80 to 69. 
excuse me. Look, Alan Dunn is getting it, uh, taking care of business there, scoring with that big old five. <laughs> wow. He's averaging 13 a game. Get that outside shooting going. Whew. Six of 11 from three. My word. I mean, I guess somebody's got to score, right? So, Alan Dunn has been the guy so far this year. I see a 3-4 and four Louisville squad coming up. Of course, we got to go there to play. So, the first... Um, our first matchup between my North Carolina Tar Heels and my Louisville Cardinals looks like it's going to be an, a pillow fight of epic proportions. Give me silk and feathers everywhere. Still got a couple out-of-conference home games, though. We're at seven wins. If we can pull these last two, then we only need six in the ACC, and we get ten home games. So, am I going to pull my lineup when I play Louisville? Beach Bear already asked if I was tanking against Louisville. 100% no. It's not a thing that I do. I mean, I don't like to see them do poorly, but I do like to beat them if I got to play them. So, just how I roll. I like Louisville, but I also like to win. I mean, we're trying to turn this thing around. We're trying not to get fired. We'd like to keep a little bit of uh, job uh, security. And, you know, how many times do you get to run a team that's got 13 walk-ons? <laughs> and we got two scholarship players, and only one of them gets on the court. I know, is the other one... I think the other one's starting at power forward. Let's see. Let's see how they're actually performing. So Miner is getting his 10 a game. Lofton and Dunn are really leading the way scoring-wise. Uh, who is... Chris Randolph is the other scholarship player. 40% from the field, 37% from three. Four and a half rebounds a game. Eight points a game. You know, all right, so whatever. Miner's doubling up the assist to turnover ratio real close to two to one there and i guess it'd have to go a little bit both ways but 44 percent from three 48 percent from the field not too shabby and like i said before is the only guy on the team that can play defense so uh let's see if we can get this hofstra club nope three point loss at home to hofstra uh, so that's unfortunate, but we still got a shot to get to eight. We still got a shot. I think Dunn will be drafted. Absolutely not. Is it easy to turn around Indiana? Yes. Uh, I also enjoy, as much as I despise Indiana in real life, uh, I do respect, you know, theoretically their, their tradition and, and all that good stuff. So I've, I've actually at least once, if not twice, turned around Indiana. Uh, it's... It's always easier to turn around those historical powerhouse teams, the UCLA's, Indiana's. This UNC save, I think, is going to be easier than most. Um, because all these teams have, like, a natural prestige level, right? And like I talked about a couple of streams ago, like, Missouri is usually here, and, like, I kind of stretched them up here. Like, if you think about a rubber band, like, I was stretching them up, and it, it's harder and harder to pull it as you go up. Like Indiana, UCLA, all those teams are kind of stretched down from where they usually are, so it's a lot easier to get them back to neutral. And then you can take them higher than you can take anyone else a lot quicker. So, yeah, UCLA, Indiana, UNC, if you get a bad Kansas, Michigan State, whatever, those those teams that you think of as historically prestigious, historically dominant, in my opinion, they are easier to turn around. But the problem is you got to get your foot in the door and get settled first without getting fired. You know, it's always the first couple of years that are rocky. Once you get going, you can turn it around real quick. And sometimes you can get lucky and, and get into a good situation. Look, Memphis 7-3. and three. What are they doing over there? Uh, Memf uh, Miz I'm sorry, Missouri. Missouri should have a better record than UNC right now. So I don't know what they're doing unless they played a bunch of, uh, a bunch of good teams out of conference or something. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I've also thought about St. John's here and there. I, I've never actually done it, though. Oh, yes. 14-point win against Stephen F. Austin to get us to 8-3 and three on the season. So we are more than halfway to our goal of 15 wins. The problem is now we hit conference play. So we get 10 more games at home. Unfortunately, they're against ACC teams. Uh, but we do, we'll do. we get Louisville on the road here, see what that looks like. Uh, they're 6-4 and four on the year, so not great, but it is at the Yum Center. And then we got a red-hot 11-0 Miami Hurricane team coming in, which is going to be real tough to pull off. And right after that, at NC State on the road, they're 9-2. So we're looking at a 0-3 start here in ACC play. Unless we can pull this game off at Louisville. So... All right, two more days, then we start ACC play. We're getting there. It's interesting to see the wins and losses this year, but, like, I have no connection to the players at all. So it's hard to get, like, super into like, individual performances. Like, all these walk-ons, like, whatever the opposite of making me excited is, like, they make me anti-excited. Right, on the road at Louisville, they started off, I think they played Pitt first. Was that what that said earlier? But I think they were on the road. So let's see if we can go in and steal one at the Yum Center. Uh, they're an average team. Of course, we're not much to write home about. Ooh, we take care of business right out of the gate. The Tar Heels knocking off the Cardinals. So I'm not taking any prisoners. I'll be straight ruthless. We got to get those wins where we can get them. So we walk in and win the first ACC. Or write that down. In the stream. Very, my very first ACC game in North Carolina. I think this is the first time I've played an ACC team on stream, period. Very first win at the Yum Center against the Louisville Cardinals. And it's a win. So uh, that's one for the record books. Yeah, year one's always really hard to care. Unless you're good. I mean, you make a good run. It's surprising how excited you could get in year one if you make the Final Four or something crazy like that. All right, so Miami coming in looking like a dominant team. Can we sneak one by them? Get that home crowd behind us. Rally them up. Oh, ho, ho. we smoked them. The walk-ons went off. This might be the Unforgettables. Uh, unfor Unforgettables? Unbelievable? Unforgettables? I think it's Unforgettable. Whatever. Where's Chris Randolph's injury? Sore wrist, you'll be fine. Walk it off. That's a that's a pretty dominating win there against what appeared to be a good Miami team. So either either we're a little bit better than I thought, or they're just super overrated. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Bond, Edmund Bond, seventeen points, five assists, six steals for Troy. Well, I should check the email, see if that guy ever committed. Uh, nothing yet. So here we are. I thought we might start off 0-3 in the ACC. Uh, started off 2-0. Now, at NC State, going to be a stretch. Then we got to go home against Duke, and then on the road against Virginia Tech. So maybe I'm just going to keep betting against this team and let them keep proving me wrong. It's been a winning formula so far. There's, they're guaranteed to go 0 and 3 over these next three games. How about that? I personally, guarantee it. 0 and 3. <laughs> right out of the gate, I'm completely wrong. We go into NC State and win by nine. Keeping it up. All right, maybe that's the last win. Now we're going 0 and 3. Duke at home at Virginia Tech, home against Pitt. We're gonna fall apart. The walk-ons cannot keep this up. It's impossible. Impossible. We're already to 11. We might hit 15 this year. 
We might hit 15. I swear, if we actually, like, win 20 games, go to the Sweet 16, something like that, like, I'll lose my mind. I don't think I can do two seasons on a weeknight. Uh, it would end up being, like, four hours, give or take. We'll see if I can get a little bit into a second season. I'd like to speed it up a little bit and get some cool UNC stuff going just because, like, this, you know, the, the beginning of this rebuild is sort of uh, whatever it is what it is. Uh, but, I, like, I'm super excited about UNC. I'm super not excited about this season that we're playing right now. Although, I mean, it's the Dukies and the Tar Heels. You, you got to get excited for that one. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll play it out. You know, if if the upstairs stays calm, you, you never know. I'm excited and would like to do a lot. It's just a matter of what I can get away with without getting in trouble. You know, like three days before Mother's Day. All right, Duke coming into the Dean Dome. Shh. Reminding us that we're a team full of walk-ons. A 14-point drub in there from the Blue Devils. All right. So that was our first ACC loss. Now we got at Virginia Tech, home against Pitt, on the road against a Miami team that's got to be looking for revenge. I'm feeling an 0-3 run coming, starting right now. 0-3. The Tar Heels and the Virginia Tech Hokies. What do we have here? Can the walk-ons make it happen again? No. <laughs> Jeez. Obliteration at Virginia Tech. 91 to 68. Ouch. All right. So we are definitely trending back a little bit closer to what I thought we may be, but now we got a pit team at home. Maybe we can steal one here. I mean, we just gotta we just gotta steal four more games, and I'll be happy. Pitt coming into North Carolina. Oh, there's another big steal. Seventy-one fifty-two. So nineteen points. Man, these guys. It's impossible to predict what's going to happen in this season. Uh, we're just going up against a gauntlet of mediocre. Above average, I guess, ACC teams that are hanging out in that 10 to 25 range. And we just keep pulling out wins. Yeah, it was an ugly beat down there against uh, against Duke. Uh, Pitt smoked us. Or was it? Oh, God. Now I already forget the, the order of things. But we're winning games. That's, that's the important thing. That's what you should take away from this stream. We got to go to Miami. Now we beat them by 20 at home. I expect in Miami it's going to be a different story. But we'll see. Oh, you know what I just thought of? Because I was saying earlier we would have two scholarships going into next year. But um, I think this is the last year of a scholarship production. So we may actually have three. North Carolina at Miami. 15-point loss. Terrence Miner tried. Uh, nobody else knew how to play basketball. And we lose. Not a big surprise. Drops us to 4-3 and three in the ACC. We're 12-6 and six overall. We got to steal three more games. We're almost through January now. On the road at Syracuse, not a great place to do it. The problem is, like, we've already played NC State. We've already played Louisville. All these bad teams. Ooh, Virginia sucks. That'll be fun. How's Florida State ranked number 20th and they're 2-6 and six in the ACC? Making you question the accuracy of the sim. Uh, I mean, the thing is, some of these teams are just bad. They they got bloated on out-of-conference games. Um, you know, the other thing is, when you're talking about marginal players, the, the difference between their performance at home versus their performance on the road is insane. Uh, once you get like above average and elite players, that, that starts to average out a little bit better. But on the road against Syracuse, we take it by 10. 
We lost Ben Lofton to injury. Okay. How bad is that injury? Ben Lofton. Oh, broke his hand. He's out. So, it's, I mean, look, I'm kind of surprised. Look at that. Alan Dunn is actually having a more of an impact than Terrence Minor, according to this. Now, this is, I think this generally is only looking at statistics. I don't think that it takes into account, like, just pure um, defense shutting somebody down. Like, steals, yeah, blocks, yeah. But according to this, Alan Dunn, most important player on the team right now. Four-star walk-on. Let's jump into the depth chart. Let the computer adjust that. So unfortunately, that was one of our starters. So we now have to unfortunately play a different walk-on. Whatever. <clears throat> it's what I get for taking over a big school. I get what? I'm at 13 wins, my man. I'm at 13 wins. We're rolling with a, with walk-ons. Taking care of business. Got a nice little recruiting class coming in next year. Going to get this thing set up uh, for victory. And then we're going to start cruising real soon after that. Uh, we got some decent guys this year, even though uh, I messed up the the first week, messed up the list. Done is the next Jordan. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um... Dunn might be the next Brian Scalabrini. Or Scalabrini, Scalabrini, whatever. You know, the big dude from the Celtics. He might be the next that guy. But I don't even think he's that good. <laughs> Random task, I agree with that. He said, if I win 15 games with this roster, I should get 110% job security. 100% on board with you there. The thing is, I mean, we're 13-6, and 5-3, in conference, three four state still ranked, but three and six in conference. Let's take care of the Seminole team. Nice win at home. So now we're six and three in conference. We've won, I think, two road games. You know what? I mean, this could be an NCAA team. It has no business being an NCAA team. But I mean, who's betting against it right now? Who's betting against it right now? We should still get Louisville at home. We should still get two games against a very bad Virginia team. And we've stolen some on the road here and there. I think we got Pitt at home. You know, at Duke, that's probably ugly. But Virginia Tech at home, I think we got Virginia Tech on the road, right? Didn't we win that? Or at least played them well? Drops a Jupiter. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've we've definitely got our very own version of the Unforgettables. That is certain. Quite an interesting team here. Alright, check out this inbox, see if we got anything interesting. Scouting reports. Norton candidates. How's our man Bruce Wayne doing? Still on the list? No, he did not make it. All right. <clears throat> On the road, we're taking our, we're taking this uh, circus of walk-ons into Cameron Indoor Stadium against the number eight Duke Blue Devils. They got us pretty good at our place. Now we got to go into their house. <clears throat> they gave it to us again by fifteen. I think it was fifteen last time, actually. Yeah, we, we tried, but we're just not going to beat good teams at their place right now. Not going to happen. And you know, Miami, I don't know who in the world they beat to get the ranking they had. Florida State, uh, I don't know who they – I don't know what they did in out of conference because they're getting smoked in conference. But uh, Duke looks like a legit team, and we're just not going to beat legit teams on the road with 13 walk-ons. That's not going to happen. My second assistant found some talent. <laughs> Let's see. So, uh, I don't know. Did we beat Virginia Tech on the road? Because they're 8-2 and two in conference. This looks like a good team. No, they're the ones that beat us like 91-68. This was our worst loss of the year so far, I think. 
All right, so we get a chance at home, but they've they're probably let's be honest, they're probably the favorites, and they beat us by five. So no surprise at all there. Uh, I don't know why they're not ranked. They're certainly a much better team than Florida State. They're probably better than Miami. They're probably better than Pittsburgh. So hopefully, hopefully they'll end up in the season ranked eventually. So Pittsburgh's looking all right. 7-4 in conference. Got to go to their place. Going to be a tough one. Really looking forward to these Virginia at home, Boston College at home. We need to win both of those games. Uh, and you know that should take us over 15. And that should also put us back on the right side of the bubble. Because right now we're sliding over onto the wrong side of the bubble. We're about to be 500 in conference here. Oh, we came so close. Terrence Miner dropped 17. Allen Dunn tried to get it taken care of. Just couldn't do it. But now we got a, a three-game home stretch against teams not with sub-500 conference records. With sub-500 records, period. End of sentence. All of these teams are worse than 500. So, as many times as, I, as I've sarcastically suggested we could go, we were about to go 0-3. I mean... I won't say it for reverse jinx purposes only, but follow that thought. <laughs> Finish my thought there. You know, those are my expectations right now, especially Virginia. Virginia appears to be the worst team in the league. Which is, I mean, I, what, are they have, what do they have, 14 walk-ons, 15 walk-ons? Like, how are they worse than us? I don't get that. Although, one thing I will say is how... Very high prestige schools do tend to generate better walk-ons than like low prestige schools. So maybe we're getting the benefit of the doubt on that end of things. It's the only thing I can think of. All right, here we go. Virginia 9-13, and 2-10 and 10 in the ACC coming in to our place. We need to take care of this, start a little winning streak. Taking care of business just barely. Seven point game. Much closer than I would like to see. Eventually I want to be beating teams like that by 40. But for now I'll take any win that I can get. So hey. Look at that. How's NC's offense set up? Uh, I didn't really set. They're set up. They're running 50% five out. And then 25% flex and 25% shuffle. It was just what they already knew when I got here. I'm going to completely change it for next year. Because... Uh, outside of possibly the point guard, I don't foresee any of the players that are currently on the roster actually playing next year. So, um, we're just going to completely change it without concern for aptitude because nobody is going to know any of it any better than anything else. Mm. All right, Boston College at home. Uh, they are back to 500 overall, although they are still 5-8 and eight in the ACC. So let's see if we can hold them off. Yes, sir. 13 points. Travis Jupiter leading the way. And now NC State at 11-14. and 14. So we, We're up to 16-9, and 8-6 and six in the conference. So let's see if we can keep it rolling here. Eight and six, so that's fourteen. We still got we got six conference games left. If we finish above five hundred in conference, let's take a look at the bubble watch. Well, actually, let's play this game first. If we win this game, then let's take a look at the bubble watch. If we lose it, it, it could be scary. If we win it, we should be pleased with the results. I think. I mean, we might be headed for twenty. We're trying for twenty wins here. We got to get NC State though. Ah, oh, and we got drubbed by them. So this is a terrible NC State team, and they just came in and beat us senseless at our own gym. All right. So maybe we don't want to look at the bubble watch. We're gonna do it anyway. Beer Town. We went to Carolina at at the end of last stream, uh, which I did. I did a four hour super stream on Sunday. We played through two entire seasons and jumped to North Carolina. All right, take a look at this bubble watch. I don't see us at the top over here. We got to be on the right side of this. Look at Missouri. What are they doing? Get it together, Tigers. Look at that. North Carolina. 28. So, 
I mean, we, we've got a little bit of leeway here right now. We're not even anywhere close to the edge of this right now. Although we are coming up on a three-game road tour. You know, so we're running out of home games. We're running out of opportunities and dropping that one to, to NC State. Such a bad team at home. If we don't make the tournament, that game will be the reason why. Otherwise, you know, we, we did enough this year to get by. But that's a big, big loss. Bad team, losing at home. Can't be doing that. All right, so on the road at Florida State. We got to find a way to steal a game on the road, make up for that nonsense that just happened there against the Wolfpack. Can we do it against Florida State? No, not at all. Another drubbing. Lost by almost 20. Jeff Morgan went off on us for nearly 30 points. All right, the good news is we'll get Georgia Tech at home. They look like another garbage team. Uh, the bad news is we just lost to a garbage team at home not all that long ago, so nothing is promised at this point. And now it's it's time. We're just like desperately trying to cling on to our spot in the NCAA's. We had uh, some some leeway there to lose a couple of games, but with this big stretch of away games, with the loss to NC State at home, whew, it's gonna be you know it's white knuckle time here trying to hold on to this NCAA bid. I would feel if it weren't for the NC State thing, I'd feel good about it. But at this point, you know, unless something unexpected happens one way or the other over these last few games, it's probably going to come down to what we do in the ACC tournament. And like with this team, I just don't know. I would expect that it would be bad uh, just because we're full of walk-ons and nonsense and no talent. But this team surprised me all year. I mean, they've won 16 games. So let's see what we can do at Notre Dame. Uh, I would expect to lose here. They look like a decent team. We're at their place. And they take care of business by 17. Nate Carroll drops 32 on us. So we got absolutely smoked there by the Fighting Irish. All right, so down to 8 and 9. Now at Wake Forest. But then we finish off with Georgia Tech and Clemson at home. So a couple of easier games. Maybe we can can fight back to the right side of the bubble here at the end of the season but you know if we just lose to wake win our two home games we're 10 and 10 in conference and you would think that would be close enough beach bear what's up uh so you know early on in the season we did pretty well early in conference play we were looking good hit a rough patch played some good teams at home and lost uh, played some bad teams on the road and lost uh the bad one was we lost to NC State at home by 20, and NC State was a sub-500 team. So that one's really hurting us right now. You know, that's the difference between us being on the right side and on the wrong side of 500 in conference. So now, if we could steal one at Wake, that would be great. I'd really, really like to see that, but I think it's a long shot. Yep, lost by 11. So now, two games at home, Georgia Tech and Clemson. They're both looking like not very good teams, but we've already lost to NC State at home. We've got to get both of these to get back to 10-10 and 10 in conference and, and give ourselves a real shot at the tournament. So, you know, we looked at that bubble watch. I think we've gone like 1-3 since then. So if we had a little bit of wiggle room before, we've definitely burned through it since then. It is not looking good whatsoever for us at the moment. Well, we've got a shot. So I'm excited about that. You know, the, the good news is we're kind of going quickly. Mm, I don't know. gonna say we're kind of going quickly through the stream but then we still got tournaments and everything else to go so it's gonna take a while all right georgia take it home it's almost like must win territory at this point we need wins quickly we need to get back to 500 in conference if we're 500 in conference 
you can make a you can make an argument to get into the NCAA's, but if you're sub 500 in your own conference, like do you really deserve to be in the national championship tournament? I don't know. Let's try to get let's try to get back to 500 starting right now. Yeah, yeah. 20 points. Oh, Ross Wheat suffering an injury. You know, I didn't think about that. The uh, broken hand is really when our season kind of turned around. And uh, let's see, Ben Lofton still out two more weeks with that broken hand. Ross Wheat just got hurt. That's just a sore knee. He'll be fine. But the broken hand is certainly when we went from, you know, sneaking up and winning some games I didn't think we should to uh, losing games the way that I expected a team full of walk-ons to lose. So, you know, maybe what's-his-face, Clifton, whatever, maybe he was the secret sauce that was keeping this team going. I don't know. All right, finish it off against a bad Clemson Tiger team. At home, you're in the Dean Dome. Like, let's do it. Let's go 500 in this first season. Oh, walk on, walk on university. Boom, there we go. Terrence Miner doing what he does. All right, 10 and 10 in conference, 18 and 3 overall. Now we're sitting in a good spot headed into this ACC tournament where I think just one win and we look all right. Let's see if we can't check the bubble watch now. I think we're right on the line. I don't know if we're on the right side or the wrong side of that line, but I think we're right on that line. Derek Page has finally made his college decision, and he's going to be going to Villanova. So we're only going to have two inside players next year. I don't know what Vill Ugh, It's frustrating. Uh, shockingly, none of our walk-ons declared for the draft. So... Uh, that's pretty interesting. Patrick Wheeler, the big-time player from Duke, he's going. A couple of players from Duke headed to the draft. None of our Missouri guys went. Wow. All of these consonants are going to the draft. I mean, I guess it's just Raymond Kaluski, but... Okay. All right, let's see what this bubble watch looks like right now. Tar Heel Prestige and Timidou. Don't I miss my team fighting with each other. Dude, that's the most annoying thing in the world is for your entire team to just be fighting and complaining with each other. All right, it doesn't look like we're out. So we're still somewhere in. We've definitely slid back, though, all the way down to 37th. Last at-large team sitting here at 50th, so... we got eight at-large teams behind us. I don't think we have to win a game in this tournament. But if we lose in round one, I'm going to be extremely nervous. And we've got to play a neutral court game against Wake Forest, so it doesn't look great. The good news is we don't absolutely have to win. We could lose this first game and maybe still make it. A win, I think, guarantees us NCAA tournament. Who would have thought? Who would have thought we'd even be in this position to have a shot at maybe making the NCAA tournament? We have two scholarship players, and one of them's terrible. Neither of them are good. It's not like we got like one five-star guy and then a bunch of guys around him helping. Like we got our best player is a two and a half star point guard. And if you if you go by player impact estimate, our best player is a junior walk-on. So, you know, who knows? The Demon Deacons and the Tar Heels battling it out. This is wrong. This will be in a neutral court. Now, hopefully, I wonder if the game uh, you know, throws in any kind of calculation for the way the ACC tournament Used to always like to schedule those games like in North Carolina to give North Carolina and Duke all the advantages. But, uh, I mean, are, are these in Madison Square Garden? Or where are these, where's the ACC playing tournament games these days? I don't know. Uh, either way, North Carolina's got to play against Wake. This could guarantee our trip to the tournament. Let's see what we got. Ah! All right. 
So we're going to be sweating it out. We lost it. Coach goals uh, were top three in the conference. We obviously weren't going to do that. Win 15 games, which we very much did. And I don't remember if the third one was maintain or improve school prestige. That one's going to be pretty questionable. Probably a no. But if we just drop to 90, I'll take that all day, every day, uh, given our roster, right? So let's see who's in this. I'd imagine Duke, Duke and Notre Dame. I would think Duke would be favored, but it sure looked like Notre Dame beat them. Yep. Let's see, just out of curiosity, what happened in the SEC. Ah, Missouri made it to the final and lost to Kentucky. Maybe I shouldn't have looked. <laughs> All right, selection show. Whew, we'll be sweating it out. We could be a play-in game. I'd take a play-in game. I mean, we got... I've never been in the play-in game, but I've also never had 13 walk-ons, so first time for everything. Let's see it. Got Colgate, Fresno State. Louisville and North Carolina in a play-in game. Not only did I call the play-in game, but it's against Louisville. In Dayton. Wow. Whoa. What kind of karma is this? North Carolina versus Louisville in a play-in game in Dayton. So, we made the tournament with all these walk-ons. But to get past the play-in games, we got to play against Louisville. That's funny. All right, so in pits, Villanova, Oklahoma State, Kansas Temple. Oklahoma. There's Bellarmine. My boys at Bellarmine made it into the NCAAs. Purdue. Notre Dame a three. Missouri a five. Warrior Boyd asked why I have 13 walk-ons. I took over a North Carolina team that was on probation. So they didn't have any scholarships and had to get a bunch of walk-ons. So I came in and, I mean, the good news is I've got like a nine-man recruiting class. Uh, but the bad news is we had to play this season with 13 walk-ons. We have two scholarship players, and neither of them are great. <laughs> Missouri fans are huge Louisville fans now. <laughs> I think Man Cave Hawkeye might be a little bit annoyed at me for leaving uh, Missouri. Right, well, let's let's see what happens in the play. So here's our roster, uh, asking about the walk-ons. and I, I think I've got 13 walk-ons. I haven't counted them. I know I've only got Terrence Miner and Chris Randolph are the only two scholarship guys, and usually a team has 15 players, so I was just guessing, but let's see here. Yeah, 13 walk-ons. Let's see. 14, 2, 14, and 14.45. Travis Jupiter ended up being the most impactful player on the team, at least, again, stat-wise. Terrence Miner ended up getting up to 12 points a game. Alan Dunn, still around the same. Ben Lofton, four more days. We would Cards turning heel like in wrestling. Yeah, that sounds about right. Missouri ended up a five seed. All right, so Ben Lofton would have been back in four days, and you know we, we, we got to win some playing in uh, if we want to get the man back. If we had all of our walk-ons, clearly we were a great team. But without that one walk-on, like, how could we win this game? <laughs> all right. Here it goes. Uh, I thought that the I thought the game earlier was going to be... Uh, you know, the funny thing, they're a five. I don't. I didn't see who they're playing. They might be playing one of these twelve seed walk-on game winners. So I could go from Louisville to play in Missouri. I don't know. But I, I tried to. I tried to say my earlier game against Louisville was going to be the biggest pillow fight of all time. But this one is in a play-in game, so maybe this is worse. I'm not sure. You know what's better, what's worse. But the Tar Heels and the Cardinals in a Dayton play-in game. Ah, they beat me. I don't get to. I don't get to move on. Louisville took me out. Ah, that's. We beat them at their place. 
and then they come back and beat us. You know, it's we were. Hey, look! If I had beat them, I would have been playing Missouri. I knew they were a five, so we were that close to. We were that close to Man Cave Hawkeye's dream of Missouri lighting me on fire in the NCAA first round. Uh, just didn't work out. Let's actually let's check that game. Let's let everything else play. Yeah, the AI is writing funny storylines. Uh, Gary being hilarious tonight. So let's see who wins this Louisville Missouri game. Oh, of course Missouri, but not as much as they should have. Where, where was Batman? <laughs> Uh, Tim Wayne was nowhere to be found. Uh, that Missouri team looks like they've lost their way. And the recruiting still looked good, but... Look, getting smoked by Seton Hall. What are y'all doing? I'm very disappointed in that performance. Uh, their new coach doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, that was pretty funny. But uh, Missouri, you know, they, they were in the Final Four last year. The thing is, they weren't losing anybody, were they? Who they, they lost Antonio Washington. Okay, that's a big loss. But they brought in other... They brought in replacements. They should have been much better than that. They lost in the second round. I, I, I think that's the difference. Uh, when, like, an AI coach comes in, it's like, oh, you know what, we're just going to run a completely different offense that you don't have any idea how to do. We're going to play all these crazy lineups. That's the kind of nonsense that happens. Let's get through this. Then we can do a quick recap of all the brackets, see what we're looking like. Ooh, Notre Dame's making stuff happen. Well, I thought the other guy had consonants. Prebislav Davidenko. All right. Was that a Georgia sighting? Is Georgia going to the Final Four? Got Let's check out these brackets. Let's see what's happening in this NCAA tournament. Would I take Bruce Wayne as a transfer? Absolutely. Dude's a baller. All right, so Pittsburgh. All right, we got Villanova losing to Kansas in the Elite Eight. So Kansas is going to the Final Four. The rest of this doesn't look crazy. Well, 12 over 5, 7, 10. All right, so nothing crazy there. But Kansas does upset Villanova. In Indy... We had a little bit of excitement here as Seton Hall knocked off Oklahoma. Uh, you know, Missouri embarrassed themselves. Oh, California Baptist over Vermont. 11 seed winner is always fun, but it was against Vermont, so it's not like a traditional power or anything. But we do have Notre Dame going on from Indy. In Houston, Miami somehow got the one seed. They lost to Maryland, the five. And then Maryland lost to Marquette. So Marquette's moving on. And in Boise, ah, here's a nice one. The non-seeded IU Hoosiers knocked off BYU. Then they play Florida. Florida moves on against the seven-seeded Georgia Bulldogs. So the SEC plays for the rights to go to the Final Four, and it's the seven-seeded Georgia Bulldogs. They knocked out Duke 80-63. to Duke, What was Duke doing in the NCAA tournament? They tried to lose to the 15-seed Cornell. All right, so your finals... No ones, no twos. You got Kansas, Notre Dame, and Marquette, all three seeds, and a seven-seeded Georgia Bulldogs team. So, an exciting Final Four coming up. Ernie Johnson would love Georgia to win, even though it's not college baseball. Yeah, you might be right there, Breeze. All right, let's go back over to the games grid. Duke was definitely doing something. Uh, wasn't in their favor. I know that much. I don't know if they had an injury. I mean, you, you never know. I don't check, like, team-by-team team injuries or anything. But yeah, maybe – I think they had a couple of guys go pro. Maybe they were just like, no, like, we're going pro like, now. <laughs> maybe they just left. I don't know. Uh, Notre Dame trying to hold it down for the ACC. I th think they lost. Georgia Bulldogs moving to the finals. So Georgia's playing somebody. And it is, oh, it's Notre Dame. I thought Kansas had 76. They only had 66. So it's Notre Dame versus Georgia in the NCAA championship game. 
and the Fighting Irish take it, but barely. Georgia gave them everything they wanted, and then some. Yeah, unranked Georgia, that's right. Seven-seeded, unranked Georgia. Let's take a look here at the individual. Look at this. Virginia sucked. They were like 1-50 in, in the ACC conference, and they had the Norton Award winner? Like, how bad was the rest of their team? Howie Nash, Defensive Player of the Year. Kentucky got a couple of... Mark Pope. That's an old-school Kentucky name there, coaching BYU. First-team All-Americans. Villanova's got a guy. Second-team All-Americans. All right. Let's check out the ACC. Second-teamers. Florida State with a couple of them. Duke had one. I think he's one of the guys going pro. First-teamers. There's the Norton winner, there's the defensive player, there's the other Dukey, and individual awards in the ACC, Jeremy Reed, Howie Nash, Jeremy Reed again, and Brett Nelson from Miami. Take a quick look here, you know, we'll move on from Missouri after this, but in the SEC, they couldn't get anything up here, certainly not getting coach of the year, that's Jim Ingles, took them all the way to the finals. First team all SEC players, Missouri got shut out, second team. Uh, also got shut out there. So their coach came in, ruined all the talent that I spent years and years and years building up. Took them straight to the gutter. You know, Missouri, they're already going to start their long fall back towards mediocrity. So just right out of the gate, they're going to drop back down probably into the high 60s. <sighs> My word. Retirement. All right, so... <laughs> School prestige, we failed theoretically, but we went from 75 to 75, so not bad. Succeeded here, failed there. Drops us to 90%. I'm completely good with that. We're still at 90%, and we're bringing in a, an interesting team. I, I don't think they're like Final Four straight out of the gate kind of team. They're the kind of team that develops into a, into an Elite Eight team. Uh, but that's where you start. And then you steamroll it. The same way we had Missouri rolling. Uh, we could have kept it rolling. But without the budget, it makes it more difficult, right? If we'd had the budget there, we could have done anything we wanted. Here, we've got the budget to do whatever we want. So it's just, uh, just a matter of uh, taking a couple of years and getting it up and going. So let's see. What do we lose there staff-wise? We lost our recruiter. All right. So... I want about 170,000. Uh, well, once my coach hiring is done, I want about 170,000 to recruit with. That's a buy reports, you know, uh, summer travel, all that good stuff. So check out who's hiring. I would hope Missouri's hiring. <laughs> Kentucky on probation. That's right. Texas on probation. Virginia Tech, Tennessee on probation, St. Mary's is available. Arizona State's available. All right, interesting jobs. Obviously, we're very much set at uh, North Carolina. Uh, staying here for the rest of this stream. Uh, we'll take them straight to the top. Then we'll take them straight to uh, domination. We'll just keep streaming that until domination gets boring. And then... Uh, when the time is appropriate, I'll let people pick a new goal for us uh, for the save. But for right now, oh, we're working up towards being competitive and start to win national championships. So let's see what we got here. We need a first assistant. We need a recruiter. So we got a huge budget. Our assistant salaries, even if it's 100000 385 I mean, I could spend 200000 on an assistant easily and have no heartburn whatsoever. George Brooks here, he is a first assistant, but he's at Auburn. So, I mean, let's see if we can just pull him in. It says he'd be interested in an assistant job. You know, I, I think the CBGM's got me nervous on this, trying to pull these guys away uh, from other schools in the in our multiplayer leagues got me a little bit gun shy. But we ought to be able to steal a guy like this. Let's let's pay him like one hundred sixty thousand, right, for four years. Make that offer. Run that bid. Let me get a streamer, streamer fuel. Ooh. 
There we go. We got him. All right, so we didn't have to pay out the nose. Still got a little bit of extra money to play with, and we got a guy ranked 96 at recruiting. So good to go. Hey, Around the World Sports, thank you for the follow. Always appreciate that. Random Tass says, new goal, win the championship with only walk-ons. I'm telling you, if somebody can do that, more power to you. Oh, how do, I got vacancies again? One of my coaches got hired away? Yeah. All right. So Roy Roberson headed to coach at Syracuse. So now we need a practice coach. All right, 195. So I, mean, I could still spend up to like 100 if I needed to. Oh, do we start poaching Missouri? Oh, yeah, we do. We start poaching Missouri's coaches. <laughs> Maybe. I also like, I mean, I like the player development here. But also kind of like player development with a little bit of offense and defense ability. But he's a first assistant, so we can't get him. Yeah, I think we just got to steal the guy from Missouri. We're paying him 50 at Missouri. Uh, you know what? We'll pay you 75. We'll pay you 75 at North Carolina, my man. What do you say to that? Does reputation matter when choosing an assistant? Reputation. Aha, we stole the man for more money. Uh, the reputation, what this is going to be, is, I mean, it's their coach reputation. It's mostly going to affect the amount of money that they're requesting. So, like, if you sort by reputation, you can see up here how, for the most part, I mean, within, within a few thousand, the guys with the better reputation are going to be higher. And the guys with a really bad reputation are going to be lower. So reputation is mostly affecting how much money they're going to command on the free market. So it doesn't have a, any big effect on... It, it just has an effect on what AI schools will offer them, really. All right, so we should be able to finish in advance here. Well, so I like that. Only spending 270000 on assistant coaches. we still got 200000 to recruit with. And like I said before... I only need about 170. So we got about 30,000 extra. So we are definitely just swimming in the money. Uh, we don't need budget whatsoever. Let's upgrade facilities at every opportunity. Not going to go for it. You know what? I don't blame you. We just... Uh, we just played a season with 13 walk-ons. I don't think walk-ons are expecting much uh, in the way of facilities. So, whatever. I, I get it. You know, okay. I, I, I want to get frustrated with the Missouri board because they wouldn't give us any daggone money or else we'd still be there winning games. But uh, they ran us off. Uh, we found a welcoming uh, place here at UNC. More than double the budget, which is just ridiculous. I mean, at Missouri, we were trying to work with like two hundred thirty thousand dollars. Period. And now we're paying our coaches two seventy and not even caring because we still got money coming out of our ears. So, the budget just allows you to compete at such a different level. Not only with recruiting and the the uh, reports that you can buy and the travel that you can do and uh, all of that, but the the coaches you can bring in makes such a difference. So, like, not only are we going to be nearly 100 recruiting, but so is our number one assistant. Like, that's not even fair. Even on the brutal recruiting, we're and we're still at 75 school prestige. So, it's not going to take much to bump us up there to 80. And once we get there, like, it's just going to – it just snowballs. Everything does. All right, so we have five scholarships open for next year. How do we have five? I thought we had the two that were available. Oh, we had two juniors who are now seniors, so there's two, plus the two that we carried over, plus the one that came off of from probation. So five scholarships open for next year. They, it, Even with the class that we had, they still rank at top 20. Now, that's mostly just because we brought in so many guys. 
Yeah, Missouri was really, really negative in the locker room. Uh, that was frustrating. Uh, hopefully we've moved past that, but we'll see what happens. So we'll see what the AI suggests. I assume we'll just go with a national report and an Atlanta East report, both gold. They want to go with a basic national? Wait, so they want to spend 40000 here? What are they going to do with 160000 for the rest of the... In no. Uh-uh. Go premium national, baby. Or, yeah, I, we go premium national. Now, the other option is to maybe just pull, like, gold reports from Atlantic East, Southeast, and, and Midwest. But uh, I like the premium national, premium Atlantic East. Let's roll with it. Maybe this time, maybe on this save uh, tonight, we're still... It still hasn't been quite two hours. Let's check out transfers real quick. Nobody transferred out. Let's go in and see. I don't know. I never know exactly how the transfer scholarships work. So we have five available. If we could pull one. Oh, look at this guy out of Louisville transferring. Another guy. A couple guys out of Louisville transferring. Nick Strong. Good score. Top 25 type of guy. That's a good one. Oh, not friendly, but he wants to play and he's got excellent work ethic. A three and a half star guy with five star potential. Was small forward where we light there. We pulled in a Juco and a freshman, right? So that's actually not too shabby. Luke Slaughter. Look at the scoring there. The rebounding. He can do a little bit of everything. Ranked 80th, but he's four and a half stars, five star overall. Questionable work ethic, expects starters minutes. And he's a shooting guard. Hmm. Huh. Donnell Haywood, no. I don't want to pull in two transfers. He's a sophomore. And he's a junior. Hmm. I mean, I really like the scoring there from Slaughter. The problem is I'm going to end up running uh, motion and triangle, and he's got nothing on that. But if he does come in... He'll get an entire season to practice that as a red shirt. I mean, he's questionable work ethic. Personality's average, so it's not like he's a jerk. You know, the other guy's a bit harsh. Neither of them are disruptive force. But, I, I mean, I, I think I like Slaughter a little bit better. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I mean, we got a good, we got a good shooting guard, but we'll always take talent, right? Why can't we offer him a scholarship? We can't offer any of these guys scholarships. It says we have three available. Do we? Can we not actually? Can we not actually offer any of these guys? Let's advance and see if it stays like that in week two. It says we have three available. Yeah, it's, it's not actually going to let us offer a scholarship. So my assumption is that's one of those weird things coming off of probation. All right, so it would have been nice to pull him, but it does not look like that's a possibility. So we're just going to skip those sessions, move straight on into uh, good old-fashioned regular recruiting. We will get to check out the NBA draft again, see if any other of our Missouri Tigers went. And then we're going to take a look at this class that came in and see what we actually managed to, uh, to land talent-wise. We can take a look at ability, and then we can fill up our, our call watch list. You know, we're, we're about two hours into the stream. It's like 8 o'clock where I'm at. Uh, so I can't stream for another two hours. It would just put me too far into the night. And you know, Down in the basement for four hours on a weeknight isn't really... <laughs> Not how you stay in your wife's good graces, so I can't do that as much as I might like to. 
But, um, no, Random Task says that's a bug. It, it may well be. Uh, I've never seen that before, but I've also never taken over a, a team on probation, never come out of one of these weird things. So, all right, one more. Let's get through this summer travel. We can let the AI suggest it, but that's exactly what we wanted to do. It's just if I can click one button and do it. How much does this cost? Out of curiosity, five. So it's forty six hundred for anything. I'm just trying to do some math for for the online league. Okay. Forty six and thirty seven. Yeah, I'm definitely keeping happy home. <laughs> I appreciate the encouragement there, but I, I, it wasn't even a consideration. Like, I'm just going to wrap it up. But I am going to... I can definitely stretch it out another 15, 20 minutes. So we can take a look at this roster and fill up a call watch list. That way, at the very least, I won't do the stupid thing where I skip through uh, skip through the, the Indy camp and the West Coast camp again. All right, so we're here into recruiting. First, the pro draft. Let's see. Do we have anybody from Missouri? I doubt any of our walk-ons went. Something tells me that's probably a no. No. This coach has completely ruined Missouri. We got absolutely nothing. All right, we're just going to delete all those emails. Nothing to see there. Let's take a look at what kind of team we've brought in here. And you can see right out of the gate, there's just, there's stars a little bit of everywhere. And this kind of looks like last year's team, but at the same time, like I know these are decent scholarship players. You can see Terrence Miner has jumped up there, the senior. That's good to see. Uh, Newman and Gunn looking good. So here, you know, right out of the gate, what we're going to have to start doing immediately is identifying people that we can throw a red shirt on and, and get a little bit of separation out of this huge freshman class we just brought in. And with Terrence Miner and Anthony Gunn at point guard, uh, I think I can safely redshirt Jermaine Newman. Yeah, so it's not too concerned about playing time. Should be all right. So Joyner and Gunder at shooting guard. You know, and that's, this is a nice thing. You bring in a Juco like this, I mean, he's got the nice, he's, he's developed, right? He's already had a couple of years in college. So he's developed. He can come in and play right away. The he's not he's going to have deficiencies as far as the offense goes, but on this team, everybody's going to have deficiencies here because we're completely revamping it. They're all new players. So uh, usually that would be a negative for me. In this case, it's not. He's probably a starter on this team. Take a look at the small forward position here. Randolph comes back, but he's hot garbage. Shea Thornton and Leo Haskett. Now Haskett was a JUCO. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to work out. Shea Thornton, on the other hand, coming in with four-star rating, four-and-a-half potential, straight out of the gate as a freshman, seven in scoring, six defensive ability, sevens all over the place. Shea Thornton, heck of a player. So we're looking good and deep at point guard, good and deep at shooting guard. We've got a good small forward right out of the gate in Thornton. Maybe a little bit light here because our Juco didn't work out at all. Although we still got Allen Dunn, and, I mean, he's a walk-on. But at the same time, he kind of carried the load last year. So, you know, I, I like I like Shea Thornton better, but Allen Dunn's a perfectly acceptable backup for year one. Eric Tice rolling in as a freshman power forward. Look, he can't... Uh, who can rebound that well defensively and can't rebound at all offensively? Like, what is that? How do you do that? Is it because he can't shoot on the inside and he can't on the outside? Is he like one of these stretch fours? That's interesting. But, I mean, we'll take it. It's a body on the inside, and we're sorely, sorely hurting for bodies on the inside. I mean, these walk-ons, he's actually a little bit more evenly distributed, but he can't score. His He doesn't even know what defense is. He's like, you mean Matador? Like, no, no. Not bullfighting, defense. So, I mean, that's why, you know, even stars, both of them are four stars, but at least Tice plays defense. I mean, he's not a star defensively, but he can play it. And then we look on the inside. 
Uh, Mike Rhodes, the walk-on, again, no scoring, no defense. Everything else is kind of okay. Ivan Ross, the one that we just recruited, five at scoring isn't great. Six defense is probably the best on the team. He's actually got the attacker attribute. He's very good inside shooting, good rebounding across the board. So, I mean, immediately, just looking at those ratings, you know, looking through what this team has got, I mean, Brian Joyner, seven at scoring, not great defensively, but he's a freshman. You hope that that improves. He's also got 10 outside shooting. With the seven scoring, 10 outside shooting, maybe you develop bucket getter. Maybe you develop sharpshooter. You know, that's all on the table. It could happen. So we brought in a lot of interesting talent here. And, you know, this is the kind of team you can definitely get excited about. I don't know that the end result will be significantly different from last year, but I can at least be excited about these players and and be excited about their development. And I, I think... I mean, just remember, last year we had nobody above five scoring. We had nobody above five defense. This year, we have five players who are above five in scoring. Two that are above five in defense. And three more that are at five defense. Whereas last year we had one who was ranked five at defense on the entire roster. Not only that, we've got a guy with the attack rating. Last year we had no ratings on anybody. Got Joyner, who's a crazy jump uh, jump shooter from the outside. Eric Tice, who's a crazy defensive rebounder. All these potential ratings just shot straight up. Uh, looks like Tice and Joyner are the highest out of all of them. A lot of these ratings jumped up a little bit. So, I mean, it, you know, we threw together a team. They're all freshmen. They're going to have to develop. It, it could go either way, but this is how you start. This is how you turn it around. I uh, feel very confident that this team can at least do as good as last year's team. Uh, maybe it's not a significant step up, but it, it's certainly not a step back, right? So let's jump over and see what kind of interest we got. Let's go full recruit list. And we can go all regions and all positions. Now, this is the difference. You're going to see a lot of none on here, whereas when we went with Missouri, there was a ton of interest across the board. The huge difference is with Missouri, we were only looking at one region. So if we only look at the Atlantic East, here you go. Uh, you got a non-qualifier here and here. This 2.7 is probably going to qualify. I don't know exactly why he has no interest, but a ton of interest. Basically the same thing you had at Missouri. But now we can stretch out into you know, all regions, basically. Uh, so you're going to see more nuns, but we can also reach out uh, right here, Kareem Johnson in the Great Plains. You know, Missouri wasn't getting outside of the Great Plains region. They flat out didn't have the budget. $230,000. You could just barely have a coaching staff. Oh, look at that. We got a pipeline into Missouri. Ooh, there we go. There we go. I'll take a pipeline into Missouri. That's right. Let's get this set up. See what we can get. Maybe even get a couple of weeks into this. See what we're see what we're working with here. Oh, no five star point guards. All right, but we still got five scholarships, and we just we want to spread them out, same as always. You know, you if it's working, don't try to fix it. So let's just load this up and let's go a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to get too far into this season, but you know, I think we still got a handful of people on here that are watching. I'm still into it. Uh, nobody upstairs is killing each other. So I'm going to see how, how far I can stretch it out. No promises. I don't know what we're going to do. If World War III breaks out upstairs, I will immediately bail. <laughs> but But let's... Let's just poke around here in this 2032 season. Oh, look at the small forwards that are interested in coming here. We got the number one overall player, Sarath Vaca. Look at Mike Thompson, 20 and 10 from a small forward. 
So Vaca the better score, but look at Mike Thompson in the rebounding. That's crazy from a small forward. Man, I'm, I'm digging this North Carolina deal here. The, having a budget, being able to stretch out, like stretch your feet out of one region, get nationwide, you know, get get worldwide. You know, we could definitely now. Do we want JUCOs on the? If this were guards or forwards, I wouldn't look at it. Inside player, maybe. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and throw him in the mix. So we still got five scholarships, and you can still only visit four at a time. So uh, the thought there is you visit four, and hopefully you hit those guys, and then you can pick up that JUCO later. But you saw all the JUCOs that we targeted last year. We landed all of them. Obviously, the, the small forward was a disappointment, but look at this. We've also got the number one center very interested in us. Still just not much talent at center. All right. Yeah, happy wife, happy life. That's 100% accurate. I can attest to that for sure. All right, so now that we got our list set up, Kind of failed to do that in the last one. Uh, let's let's host guys from our own region first. Call up Vaca, see what he's got to say. Like my man, I know you're about to go to the Indy Elite Camp. Like just spread the good word about what's happening in Chapel Hill when you go. Spread the good word. We got him completely unlocked. Week one. Let's see. Doritos, Locos, Tacos asks, how does the budget help with recruiting out of region? It doesn't necessarily help with the actual recruiting. What it does is give you the, the money to be able to afford reports outside of the region. So with Missouri, all I could afford, if I wanted a gold report, all that I could get was a Great Plains report. Now I can get the nationwide report. So I can go down here and see this guy, Kareem Johnson, who's in the Great Plains. I can see who I'm fighting against. I can see he's already into Texas and Kansas. I'm nowhere on the list. If I didn't have the national report, if I was just stuck in this America East region, I wouldn't have that. So that's how the budget is assisting with recruiting. In, in this year's version of college basketball 2021, I find the gold reports are even more important than in previous versions. Uh, in, in previous versions, a lot of times I just buy the basic report just to have more money because I felt like it. And you really can't do that anymore. You need that gold report so that you can uh, accurately compete against the AI for recruits. All right, so not only is Vaca rated number one overall, he's also the Indie Camp MVP, so definitely a player there. Look at that, Walter Robinson in Missouri. Come on, Tigers, get your man. You got to go get him. Maddox, Christian, and West. Oh, none of them showed up up there in the top five. Ugly. Vodka's already warm on a couple of these guys. Yeah. Although I will say, like, oh, never mind, never mind. He's a small forward. I was thinking for some reason that he was a center. Actually, for a, for a small forward, seven rebounds a game is not bad. I mean, it's not ten like Mike Thompson. But it's not bad. All right, who else do we have? If we come down to these four-star guys in region, and what if we also scout them live? Can we heat them up? Let's go talk to Ashley Dieter. Top 25 at Indy, yes. Those are the kind of people we want to be bringing in. All right, we're on his list. Who else? Tommy Hunter. Don't go to NC State. Don't make that mistake. All 
There we go. Oh, Tommy Hunter was the Juco. Well, I forgot that. That's, that's my fault. Get through the summer camps. All right, I'm just focusing on like America East guys first. Generally, it seems a little bit easier to develop interest within your own region. All right, so we should hit the dead period. We should get the last two camps. We can trim lists and start zeroing in. Dead period. Got some interest there from those local guys. Good to see. Got summer camps. And let's trim these lists. MVP at Big Apple. God, this is a guy you'd love to have. Although he's a he, questionable work ethic. Okay. Cleves is a great player. LOE, MVP at Chicago. Decent. Top 25, decent, decent. Keith Johnson, you're out of here. Ronnie Williams, top 10. Davin Keep is not a keeper. All right, so a lot of talent there at point guard. Hardworking kid, top five at Indy Elite. Host that man, scout that man, text that man. Brendan McGadney, nice looking player. All right, so this one was decent at Indy and didn't play at a regional, but that's still solid. Uh, yeah, we can go ahead and host him as well. Scout him, sure. Didn't stand out at regional. Get off my list. Same for you, Gray. Same for you, Malcolm. Same for you, Dion. All right, so point guard, there was a lot of talent. Here at shooting guard, it's looking rough. All these guys sucked. Jeez. Decent, okay. All right, so wow. Yeah, I mean, random test talking about how annoying it is, like dealing with people that are really not that far away, but you know, across the state line, so the game treats it that way. I mean, I, I don't know how you code it unless you just go by, like, straight-up distance, but then you got to put in some GPS stuff into the game. Like, I always found it frustrating for Louisville to try to uh, recruit players out of Clarks or is it Clarksville? Or uh, what's the other one right there? There's two cities in Indiana that are basically just, just northern Louisville, but it's across the river. And you know, in the game, it, it treats it not only like it's a different state, but a completely different region, when in reality, it's 10 minutes from campus. But, you know, that's the, the limitations of, of of gaming, and, you know, especially indie gaming. So, it is what it is. I, it's just a quirk. You know, you, you either learn to love it, or uh, I, I don't know what the alternative is there. New Albany, there you go. You know, I lived there for 25, 30 years and can't remember New Albany, but yes, New Albany is what I was going for. Was that a Google or did you just know that? Let's just host for a couple of weeks here. See if we can identify our targets. And I really wish Ashley Dieter would go hot. Or at least go warm, rather. 
If he goes warm, would be cool. Yeah, that that is a good alternative. Just be mad about it and complain in streamer chat. I'm with you there. All these people started popping up warm, and Deed are still not doing it. All right, we're just hosting for a couple weeks. Looking for targets of opportunity. We can get through all these four-star guys, I believe, before we hit August 21st and get the reorg on the uh, top tens. And even then, like, there's nothing that says that's when you have to make your offers. So, we'll see what happens here. I'm starting to generate a lot of interest. A lot of interest out of some five-star guys. Good to see that. Alright, so there's the last of the four stars. Let's hit that, and then we'll go position by position. Uh, I think, depth-wise, we would definitely prefer to get some big guys. Yeah, Louisville has I mean, some interesting architecture. You got the, uh, the Galt House Hotel down there with like the offsetting buildings that look identical. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's like a big... I don't even know the shape, like a big weird pointed condo thing right down there by Louisville Slugger Field. You got the Yum Center right there on the river now, which is awesome. Um, have I landed a recruit without a home visit? Yes, I believe earlier in the stream. I'm pretty sure we got that uh, that small forward Juco. I'm pretty sure he committed week one last year without an in-home visit. But I've never done it on, like, a high-caliber recruit or anything like that. Like you're talking about JUCOs, maybe, like, two- and three-star guys, sure. Tomorrow's Wolverine Day, really. Get, let's get hyped. All right. So we wanted Dieter to get up there. He's not doing it. Eloy, though, MVP at Chicago Prep, top 25 at Indy. Love this dude. Let's throw a hard-working kid. Yes, sir. Irvin Eloy. Yes, please. Oh, oh, give me that. I got a 92 in recruiting. Can't hang up on me. I hang up on you. All right, we're on his list. That's all we can really ask for right now. Let's see, do we have other good options? Mm, no, not there. Hmm. Mm. Okay, Ronnie Williams is a decent option. All right, so if we can't get LOE, maybe Williams, unless Dieter goes warm or hot. If Dieter goes warm or hot, we transition. All right, we know this dude's ridiculously good, but he's such a long shot. Super into school prestige. Don't think we got a chance there. But I mean, we, we should, probably don't have a chance with. Oh, maybe this one. Is he good? No. He wasn't that good. Alright, so we don't have a great shot at any of them. We're actually pretty set at shooting guard. Maybe we ignore that position this year. Is Webster a good up? It didn't stand out at Andy. It didn't stand out at the Big Apple. Why is he still on the list? Did I not go all the way through and clear these out? Did I not get to, did I only clear out the first couple positions? Top five at Indy Elite. We're not in his top ten, but we are warm on him, right? Okay. Tremendous work ethic. Uh, Tommy Hunter, he's a four-star guy. Oh, 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 he's a Juco. Okay, but that's actually a really... I mean, look at his stat line. That's a really interesting, uh, like, fifth scholarship offer, right? Didn't stand... Yeah, I must not have cleared out the rest of these lists. I must have got distracted. Didn't stand out. Get off the list. Decent at Big Apple. Okay, you can stay. Didn't stand out. Get off. All 
All right, so Brad Marsh is a really interesting option. He'll be a solid player. Uh, but you know, we we got a young power forward. What I'm going to do, I think Tommy Hunter is an interesting option. He's a Juco guy, so a lot of times you can grab these. I'm going to let him basically be our fifth offer. Now, Jesse Dixon. We have Why are his ratings not scouted? He didn't go to any camp at all? Ooh, I really am not crazy about that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's burn through these. He probably went to East Coast. Or, there really needs to be a read all button in here. National camps. Yeah, there's Jesse Dixon. MVP at East Coast Jam. Alright, so definitely a solid player. He just went to East Coast Jam. We didn't get a scouting report on him, but he's obviously a solid player. We're not in his top 10, which is questionable, but we're warm on him. So, now, nah, Marshall Thomas, he was top 5 at Big Apple, top 25 Indy, and we've got a great shot at landing him. Great shot. So, I would say our offer goes here. I mean, eventually, like, you just go for these dudes. But while we're trying to build up the depth, let's keep it reasonable. All right, so there's our center offer. We've got the Juco power forward. We're in four. At small forward, we have yet to make an offer. We don't have any really interested prospects. So let's host a couple more guys. Shooting guard is interesting. And at the point, we've got our offer into Irvin. So that's three. We still need a shooting guard and a small forward. And if we can't figure out the shooting guard, maybe we offer another. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll continue to think about it. No, it, it's not that he wasn't being invited to a camp. He went to East Coast Jam, which I didn't attend, so I got no information on it. And then a lot of the top, top prospects, they don't actually go to regional camps. So you're not going to get any regional information on them. All you get is the national camp. And since he went to East Coast instead of Indy, I didn't get that note. But you can see in the email, uh, he was the MVP at East Coast Jam. So when you don't have the note, sometimes you got to do a little bit of troubleshooting to figure it out. Either it's an international guy, a JUCO guy, or some kind of weird situation like that. Uh, and so in this case, it was just a weird situation. Oh, look at that. Ashley Dieter finally warm. We're finally in his top 10. MVP at Big Apple. Top 25 at Indy. But you know what? You, you mess around like that. We jump on our boy Irvin. Although I'd take them both. Uh, but, you know, we're already looking pretty good at point guard. We really only need one. Shoot. Oh, we went to warm on McGadney? Yeah. I mean, we got to offer him. He's too good. He's just too good. Top five at Indy. All right, so there's our shooting guard offer, and it's small forward. We went to warm on Vaca also. All right, what else can you do? You got to swing for the fences, baby. We didn't come to North Carolina to recruit a bunch of guys out of the Georgia Superstar Camp. We came to recruit the number one player in the nation. That's what we're doing over here. You should get out. Get out of here. All right. We got our guys. We got our offers. Uh, let's see. We still got plenty of budget. Look at that. $50,000 left still. Let's host a couple more small forwards because we're still a little bit questionable there. All right. Let's get in. Let's see if we can get through. Now, Vaca and uh, Magad, both those guys could commit without letting us in the door. Could happen. I actually bet it happens with at least one of them. Yep, McGadney. Not even going to let us in the door. Straight to Georgetown. All right, so a little bit of false hope there with McGadney. I don't think we got another option at shooting guard. 
not another good option at least. So now the question is, so we brought in a Juco in a freshman last year. That's fine. Uh, do we want to send an offer to another point guard? We're hot on Billy Lawson. How'd he do? Uh, no. So it's basically, do we offer Dieter or do we save the scholarship? And we've already got Dunn. We've already got uh, the other kid that we want a red shirt. And then we're targeting Eloy. But you know, there's no guarantee we grab Eloy. We might as well offer Dieter, visit him as well. And if we get them both, you know, wonderful. Oh, although now I feel like maybe, oh no, I was actually going to say maybe I should come over here and offer Brad Marsh, but he went to Maryland, so you're dead to me. Corey Stokes, no. I just don't see any really like top-notch elite talent here at Power Forward. Other than Brad Marsh, who obviously we can't get. So I think this Juco here is probably still our best option. All right. Marshall Thomas. <laughs> Guess what we got for you in North Carolina, baby? That's playing time. Let's check out the... Man, how cool would it be to bring in this dude? Playing time, baby. Playing time. I guarantee we'll start you. Shooting guard with a gun only to ignore. We're just, you know, we're just bringing in guards, right? So here we go, location. And for Eloy, uh, also location. Now this is going to be a, a, a tougher, uh, tougher hill to climb this year. We don't have nearly as many of these guys that we're just running away with, but we are on, I think, slightly better talent. So there's some give and take there. Uh, even if we just get one or two of them, though, all these guys are really talented. Four decisions. The first one comes from the Juco, and we didn't we didn't visit him, so it kind of worries me. He's going to go to Maryland. All right, so maybe we screwed up there. Ashley Dieter, he's coming. Ashley Dieter, that's right. Marshall Thomas, the center. Come on, baby. We need a big man. We already lost Hunter. Don't you do it to me. Yes! We're bringing in Marshall Thomas. And now the number one player in the nation. Uh, the, the, M the Indy Elite MVP, Sarath Vaca. We weren't even in his top ten, so this is virtually impossible for us to get the dude. <laughs> but that's why you pay for a recruiter. Like, that's why you get your recruiting level up. We just brought in the number one player in the country, Sarath Vaca, the Indy Elite MVP. That's the kind of player, like, if you just had him and 13 walk-ons, that's the kind of guy that can take you to a Final Four. But now we're putting an entire team around him. Who I told you how quick this was coming back with North Carolina? Talk about the next MJ. Maybe right here. Maybe right here, Sarath Vaca. So those are huge, huge commitments. It spreads it around. So we get the small forward, we get the point guard, and we get the center. Lost out on a Juco. We still have a shot at another point guard, Eloy. So where are we at here? We're fifth. I think we can still make a run at him on location. Now, after that, shooting guard, nothing is super interesting. Small forward, uh, didn't stand out. Why are these didn't stand outs? I must not have cleared these lists very well. Power forward, there wasn't any crazy talent. Senator Jesse Dixon. Uh so here's the thing. I'm thinking about just saving. 
Yeah, new playing time, 100%. That's right. Team of no one on it. Vaca, the next MJ. Absolutely. I'm thinking of saving this scholarship, which is why I'm going to sort of waste it here on offering Jesse Dixon. I don't think that we've got a shot in the world at landing him, especially after not offering or visiting him in the first week. But uh, we've got it to burn. And uh, you know, another one and done. We already got Vaca. If we landed Jesse Dixon, we, we might be favored to go to a Final Four. Or, I, I don't know, it, it could get scary quick. We go Conference Prestige here. All right, we're all good. Let's get the schedule. So Wichita State at home at Xavier, Penn, Cincinnati, Indiana State at Villanova. Gah! Why does our athletic director hate us this year? What are our goals? Out of curiosity. Sweet 16, top three, 15 games. Can do that. Four-star recruit. Already did that. Improved school prestige. That's a definite maybe. And these are both mm, uh, long shots in my opinion. But if we can go three out of five, that's not too shabby. So, all right, we'll deal with that schedule. I think we can, we should still be able to hit 15 with that. Vaca could be a Norton award winner. You know, I rarely find the Indie MVP is always one of the top players. Oh, look at that. We got, you know, ruin it here for you, but Irvin Eloy committed and that virtually guarantees that we did not get Jesse Dixon. Yep, Eloise coming, and Dixon is headed to Virginia. So not only did we not get the man, but he's going to Virginia. Look, hope to be on the court with me next season. No, you don't. Don't tell me that, liar. Why you got to be such a liar? Let me go check out Virginia's dashboard, see if we were even in the top three. No, we weren't even in his top three. Why you got to be such a liar, Jesse Dixon? You jerk. But we did get Irvin Eloy. So now, I mean, we've just, I mean, we've got Jermaine Newman, Anthony Gunn. Both of these guys are very solid. They'll be great. I think probably both of the point guards we're bringing in are better than these guys. So in theory, I mean, we, we redshirt Newman now. Uh, next year... Maybe we redshirt one of the two guys we just brought in. Uh, maybe we don't. You know, maybe we play both of them with Joiner and Gunder. I don't know. But you can't turn down talent. We got a we got another big man coming in, and then we've got Sarath Vaca at small forward. So we'll already have you know Shea Thornton, who's solid as it gets. But we're gonna bring in just a otherworldly player over here. Uh, so let's check. I don't think that we've got any. He went in conference, so. <laughs> All right, Random Tass says technically he's correct. He will see me on the court next season. Uh, he's going to be in conference. So, yeah, I mean, if we want to get technical about it, that is accurate. Fair enough. Are any of these other guys decent at all? Top five at Big Apple, Craig Edwards. All right, so Craig Edwards is another pretty decent target here. So not cleaning up my lists. I just completely missed Edwards by not cleaning up my lists. So we can give that a go. Maybe we land him, maybe we don't. We'll, we'll have a three-man rotation on the inside, which is solid enough. But I'd love a little bit of depth. Straight to warm. That's a pretty good sign. Let's go do it again. Come on, baby. Come on home to me, Craig. So now... Nah. 
<laughs> We're right back to Argument Central. What is going on? Shea Thornton and Ivan Ross. All right, well, now I do care about it. Apologies. Let's get more apologies. Thank you. All right, what were the other issues? See, it's, it's this caliber of recruit. It's these middling guys that are such pains in the neck. Anthony Gunn and Chris Randolph. To hell with him. Leo ha Haskett's a jerk. Anthony Gunn's popping up on here again. Let's go talk to him. All right, so we're starting off with a suspension there. That's great. Leo Haskett is your problem. All right, so hopefully we crack down on these guys early and knock this crap out. Mike Rhodes and Derek Miles. I don't even know who those guys are. All right, so hopefully that is all we need to deal with there. Right, so we still got the offer out to Crawford. And then we got Vaca, the two point guards. in the other center okay so yeah just the one offer outstanding we'll either grab him or leave it alone oh sh and we're into practice and recruiting so what i need to do real quick is get another drink and i need to get this strategy and actually the practice plan is most important i need to get all this set up so we are not running that. We're not running that. No. Uh, let's see. So we want 20 and 20. Ooh, maybe. Wait. 10, 10, 20. Fifteen and fifteen motion triangle. So we're gonna go motion triangle. Th no, we're not going three two zone. Hell yeah, three two zone's fine. Save that. Nah, actually, take it back. Like a one two two. Save that. All right. So strategy wise, we're going. Whoop. Feel for thought. Yeah, absolutely. Feel for thought. That's right. Let's get it cracked open so we can actually gain access to the fuel. Fuel has been accessed. Uh, strategy. No flex, no shuffle, no five out. We're not doing any of that. We're going 50% motion. And the rest of the time we're running triangle. Let's back off this offensive set usage since you guys don't know anything about it. Defensively, go 10% man, no percent that, 90% percent one two two. All right, so we got that set. We got the practice plan set. Coach assignments. Did we have this correct? I hope. Recruiting. Practice. Scouting. Good to go there. All right. Now let's advance a couple times. Get into the regular season. Uh, once we get to the point where games start, it's probably where we'll have to call it. But, you know, I think we're set up. We're, we're going to go a couple weeks here, see if we get that other commitment. And then take a look at this recruiting class that we just brought in. So we're at least going right here to the point where games start up. Because we got to get a depth chart as well. Yeah, if you're getting guards into the post with the flex, if it's the flex or the shuffle, whichever one puts guards in the post... You definitely want guards with good inside shooting. That's accurate. Why am I running motion triangle and then zone defense? Uh, 
just because I don't want to do anything. Um, I, I don't want to do anything too gimmicky. Like I don't want to be running Princeton because you really got to have a lot of uh, coaching and ability at that. And I foresee us having one and done players like Vaca more often than not. Uh, I don't want to get into five out and just focus on recruiting outside shooters. I like traditional roster sets. I like. I don't look for like big men that can handle or shoot the three. I don't want. I, I don't recruit stretch fours intentionally. Uh, so I'm looking for traditional sets, which is mostly the motion and the triangle. Uh, not only that, I think that in my experience, the motion is the offense that freshmen most often come in already having some knowledge of. And then as far as defense goes, I just don't think that the AI spends enough time practicing against zone defenses. So I think if you throw zone defenses out there, you you take advantage of uh, a weakness in the AI coaching and the AI practice plans. Uh, so, you know, a lot of their players aren't going to know how to play against that, especially if you're trying to if you're trying to dominate uh, what's going to stop you from dominating. Uh, one and done players, teams full of talented freshmen, who's going to be least knowledgeable about zone defenses? You know, they're going to be much better against man to man defenses, much more comfortable creating against that than zones. Uh, so that's why I've been going with zones. Yeah, I don't know if it's shuffle or flex that gets guards in the post, but either way, you want uh, good inside scoring on those guards. And, and I don't know exactly what qualifies as good inside scoring for a guard. You just want relatively good, right? Like, better than other shooting guards. Like a point guard that's better at it than other point guards. You, you can't compare them to centers and power forwards. A stretch four is a power forward that, that can shoot. Like, I, I think of a traditional four or power forward. Like, the basketball position's... Point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward is one, two, three, four, five, with the center being a five, point guard being a one. So the four is the power forward. So, like, I think a traditional power forward is like, and I guess Tim Duncan had some range out to like the elbow. Uh, you know, Charles Barkley. I think of these inside guys, right? Sean Kemp. Uh, stretch fours are kind of what the NBA's gone to, more guys that can shoot from the outside. Like, uh, you know, I can't even think of any of them right now, but like, I'm not looking for a, a power forward that can hit threes, right? I want a power forward that can play defense and rebound. So, you know, those type of players are going to fit better into a motion or a triangle, uh, traditionally speaking. Not necessarily guard handling skills, but definitely shooting skills. I think in that with the big guy from uh, that was with the Knicks and then left. Uh, I think he was a big... What in the world is his name? You know, like a Chris Bosh. Chris Bosh is a good example. He's a stretch four. I mean, he got played at center a lot of times, but I mean, his his default position really was a power forward, and he was a stretch four. Uh, I want to see how we've developed here. All right, so all these freshmen just in those practices, I mean, we're already up to about 30 in a lot of these different sets. By the end of the year, they'll creep up to the mid-30s, maybe approaching 40. And then, you know, by, by tournament time next year, these guys are going to know how to run these sets. So that's solid as, get, solid, solid as it gets. Uh, one last look at the recruiting class as a whole. As it stands right now, we've still got the outstanding offer to Craig Edwards. Yeah, Dirk's a great example of it. Porzingis, that's who I was going for. Yeah, like, like he's saying, Random Tash just said he has success with five out, but he only recruits B outside shooting and better. And, like, I, I don't want to limit it to that. I, I just go for best best available from the camp. So, all right, so we got Sarath Vaca. I don't even need to click on him. He's the Indy MVP elite. He's the best recruit in the country, not only on the court, but also in the magazines. That means he's, he's the most developed. He's got the highest potential. This guy's where it's at, and he's where he's at is going to be Chapel Hill uh, here real soon. So this is the type of player that leads you to national championships, and we've got him in year two. 
well, I mean, he'll be here in year three, I suppose, but we recruited him in year two. Then we got Marshall Thomas, four-star center, uh, top 25 at Indy, uh, top five at the Big Apple. So this is most likely a four-year guy, one of the best 25 recruits in the country. That's what we're looking for. Irvin Eloy, same thing, also top 25 at Indy. He was actually the MVP at Chicago. So extremely solid guard there. And then another extremely solid guard in Ashley Dieter, top 25 at Indy, and MVP at Big Apple. So out of the five regional camps, we took two of their MVPs. Then we took an MVP from a national camp and threw in little old Marshall Thomas, who was top 25 at Indy Elite and uh, top... He was top five, right? Top five at Big Apple. So Marshall Thomas there is... You know, the runt of the litter. Uh, the, these other three were all MVP of one camp or another. And we're still waiting on Craig Edwards. Needing some more bodies on the inside. Another guy who was top five at Big Apple. It doesn't appear that he went to Indy, so he was probably at East Coast Jam. Uh, but top five at Big Apple. You know, that's very solid. So we would love to add him into the mix just to get some depth on the inside. But... You know, pretty solid recruiting class for year two, guys. We're we're into the regular season. It's time to start the games. The stream's about to hit three hours. It's almost nine o'clock Eastern. I gotta call it, but we're rolling, right? We're set up and we're rolling. So it looks great here. You know, as, as good as the class is that I just brought in, like all we really did was establish a basketball team. Now this class right here is full of stars. And the cool thing is, only one of them is really a, a guaranteed one and done. These guys are all, they're virtually guaranteed four-year players. And they're stars. They're stars. The only bad thing is that they're both point guards. But, I mean, <laughs> I think I can deal with that. Like, if I'm going to have too many at one position, I would prefer it to be too many point guards. Right? So, oh, no. Oh, oh God. Too many guys that can handle the basketball and create plays oh no thanks <laughs> yeah we'll take some extra point guards but folks i'm saving it uh, let me actually hit the save button before i mess something up i'm saving it i'm calling it thank you all for stopping by i hope you had a great stream i had a blast uh, you know i i was wanting to get a week in a weekday stream in this week and i just had a busy week so got it in here on thursday night uh if you guys are interested in some out-of-the-park baseball, I know that the GM Games Twitch is going to be running uh, out-of-the-park baseball 2022 tomorrow night with Aaron, one of our uh, newer contributors. So make sure to tune in and check that out. Uh, I don't know. I don't imagine that I'll be coming back on this weekend with all the uh, Mother's Day festivities, but I'll see y'all sometime next week. We'll get through this season, and maybe we can do another season and a half so that we can get through this regular season with all our freshmen and then see what our man Sarath Vaca can do as far as putting North Carolina back on the map. Uh, I think it's going to be an exciting... So let's see, this, 20, this is the 32-33 season. 33-34 is going to be intense. You're not going to want to miss it, and we might get to it next time. So, guys, thanks so much for stopping by. It was great. Uh, hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next time.